For the first time in MotoGP history, we were promised an Indian summer, but as some were still enjoying what was left of the sunshine, it was clear to see that others are already looking forward to the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Big Bad Bike Show. I'm the Big Bad Biker, Sam McCauley, and joining me tonight is the one and only, the big, the big, the up north biker, Ash Hall. Say hello, Ash. Hello there. But... Unlike other weeks, it's just the two of us. It's just yes. myself and Ash because Chippy has found some pathetic reason why he can't record tonight. What was it? He's working oh, well, tomorrow. No, he's oh, working tomorrow. Yeah, great. So is everybody, oh, I've man. Got to go, I've got to go to work tomorrow. Oh. Anyway, anyway, we don't need him. <laughs> we better without him. Probably not, but we'll carry on without him anyway. If you're listening on YouTube, please like and subscribe, and you can hit the notification bell. That way you will not miss a podcast or a video. And if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, did you know you can leave us a rating? You can uh, you can click on there, give us five stars. Obviously, if you don't think we're that good, you wouldn't. But just lie and give us five stars anyway. That's, that's all right, isn't it? You can lie on it, Ash, can't you? You can tell yeah. little lies on there and give us five stars. The Spotify police aren't going to come to your door. <laughs> the, the, the Apple police can bust it in. How dare you give that five stars when five stars isn't worthy? <laughs> I've given it five stars, but of course I'm going to give it five stars my podcast. I'll give it five stars, why not? <laughs> but I noticed that I went on to Spotify and I was like, oh, I'm going to give myself five stars on Spotify, but it would only let me give me four stars. And I'm like, why is it not let me give me five stars? So I gave it four stars. But then I went in and tried it again, and then I was able to give myself five stars, so I don't really oh, understand. Okay. And then I had to write a review on Apple, <laughs> and I was like, I'm writing, that's this weird, I'm writing my own <laughs> review for myself. I'm like, oh, them guys, really good at what they do, they're right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever oh felt as sad in my entire life as I did writing a review for my own podcast. Well, Chippy said I was sad for liking all my uh, all my own <laughs> photos and stuff on Instagram. I was like, I don't care, it's an extra like. <laughs> yeah, but you put photos on there, or you put videos on there, or in this case you put podcasts on, or you put any content on, and there's nothing worse than putting content on the internet and then scrolling through it and seeing that nobody has liked it. <laughs> like, you put something on Facebook, you try really hard, okay? You try really, really hard to create something. You spend hours on it, or and sometimes minutes, but even minutes. You spend hours, sometimes days on it, in this case, <laughs> and you put it in Facebook, and you scroll through Facebook and you see 40-something people have seen it, and not one person's liked it. You're like, come on, just, just hit the like button. Just hit the like button. Nobody hit the hits the button. like button it's these not, days. Nobody hits the like button. Hit the like button. Come on, hit the button. Hit the shit. It's like, oh, I've seen it. Just like it. Yeah. <laughs> I say that, and the amount of things I scroll past, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'll come back to that. I never do. I never come back to it. <laughs> Ever. Never come back to anything. Now, the problem is, if they like it, then they'll just get loads of really crap podcasts coming up as recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate it when you do that. <laughs> you click on one video just out of pure interest, and then for the next two or three months you're just bombarded with this one creator and you're like I don't even like their stuff I don't even like what's being fed <laughs> to me but you end up watching it anyway it becomes yeah. habitual it's like oh five minutes before I go to bed I'll just scroll through and you end up watching this this lad or this lass just talk absolute nonsense and you don't even like it but you're watching it anyway <laughs> that could be us we, we could be them people you don't we like. We could be them people we, that you don't like. We, we could be them guys. We don't mind that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'd rather be the guys you don't like than the guys you just don't listen to. Yeah. Uh, right, anyway, Ash, do you want to tell us what's coming up on the show? Yeah, coming up on the show is the All New Who Am I, and this week is my turn. And uh, I think it's a good tasty one this week. Uh, we're going to be looking back at the Indian MotoGP, which was... Uh, successful in the end and uh, the world superbikes at Aragon yes yes That's and we have a little bit of reaction to last week's show as well oh is that, is that oh is that a bit of feedback yeah, I forgot to put it on the dock sorry that's my fault ah. but I do have <laughs> it on my phone that's uh, fine right, do you want to so do the catch up first or are we doing the feedback first We'll do the catch-up first, day. Eh? Okay. Um, do you want me to read out Chippy's bit? Or do we just, you like... Know, 
Do we do we just make him obsolete because he didn't he couldn't be asked to turn up? Hey, he's a, he's had a pretty eventful weekend, hasn't he? He, he had did. a pretty exciting weekend. Yeah, I'm a bit jealous of his weekend, to be fair. Yeah, yeah considering we do a water <laughs> podcast, he's probably the one that's... Uh, it's, it's deeper involved than the motorbike scene than any of us, which is ironic because he doesn't even like riding motorbikes. <laughs> doesn't he, like, he doesn't even like motorbikes that much. No, no, he likes watching them go around a track and that's about it. But um, no, I was very but you jealous. Know, you know Chippy's life more than I. I just know I do, Chippy yeah. is. That you, so I think you should uh, All right, read okay. out his feedback. So this is what ha- Chippy uh, Chippy did this uh, sort of weekend gone. So he went to his sister's wedding. Uh, that's who uh, me and Sam. Well, you're gonna you're gonna meet her actually in a couple of weeks time when we go to the BSB, and you'll meet. We're her. one big happy family. Yeah, that's it. So he went to his sister's wedding. It was pretty weird. Mm-hmm. He said it was pretty weird doing the conga with Michael Dunlop, Charlie Nesbitt, and Josh Owens. Um, Probably should also- have mentioned that he went. Probably should have mentioned that Michael Dunlop, Charlie Nesbitt, and Josh Owens was there. Yeah, <laughs> but, but now you know. Um, so, for anybody that doesn't know, Chippy's uh, brother-in-law is uh, Steve Hicken, who owns Hawk Racing. So that's why they were all there. Um, he also had a catch-up with uh, Leon. Is that Jay Cock? Is that how you say it? Jay Cock, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who I believe was in the Super Stock Thousand, I think he was saying. Or it was back. It was back in BSB uh, last year. Um, Michael Dunlop. Before cast- this, <laughs> go on. Be- before you say this, you just want to highlight these are Chappie's words. Chappie's wrote hmm. this down. So Chippy has wrote this down. That's not. That's not making us up. That's Chappie's words. So that's his, <laughs> um, one has so, said. So he said, Michael Dunlop can't dance to save his life. <laughs> Josh Owens had some good moves, best dancer there. Apart from the name dropping, it was very nice wedding and party after. Back at home now, and uh, he gets the keys to his new house this Friday, which is exciting. Especially for Ash, as he's going to be helping me move house. This is the first time you're reading this, so yeah, okay, yeah, we'll be helping you move house. <laughs> Cheers for that, Chippy. Um, and uh, Arthur had a sleep over at the Breeders and peed everywhere, marking his territory. Well, that's what dogs do. That is what dogs so, do. So, the reason Chippy isn't here tonight is because he went to his sister's wedding and he can't drink soup. So, he's he woke up the next day with a massive hangover and I think he's still suffering from said hangover. And that's why he's not here. Yeah, he now probably all is. Like, oh, I've got to work tomorrow. He's just dying with a hangover. Chippy, you're dying with a hangover. Mm. You've got to that age where hangovers last days. He is the worst hungover person ever as well. He just does this stupid thing where he goes... Help! Help! And I just want to stab him. <laughs> get, get out of me! That was a funny night. That he was hugging the toilet and he was just talking to the toilet, saying, "I don't want this. I don't want this. Get out of me!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Oh, what a night that was. Yeah, he was talking to the toilet and himself. <laughs> I usually think the best method is just to keep drinking. Just have another drink, get drunk oh, again. Oh, God. I can't do it anymore either. It's terrible. Well, neither can I. I can't do it. I, I go out, like, whenever I go, you know, out, out. Like, yeah. You go out and then you go, whenever I go out, out, I drink, like, four or five pints and I just make a fill of myself. You've been out with me. You... <laughs> it's funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It's... Uh, yeah, I've been in so many states. Where I, I remember that night when uh, <laughs> I think one of the best ones when you woke up the next morning is when you fell asleep on Tony's sofa and I didn't wake you up and I went home and Helen was wondering where you were at eight in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I fell asleep on me at sofa. And the thing is, I say to my I say to my wife Helen, I'm like I'm like if I'm going out for like a proper drink, I say I'm going out. I'll, I'll be back about ten o'clock, and she gives me a look as if to say, "No, you won't." And I genuinely thought I'll just crash in the sofa. She'll not care. She was raging. <laughs> I, was I like, remember all night. I was like, what have I done wrong? That's just what I always do. I go, I'm Sam. I go out, and get drunk. <laughs> oh. Speaking of weddings, yeah. remember the time I punched? Remember the time I punched a bride in the face in her wedding day? Watch me hula. <laughs> Do <Doing a> hula. <laughs> that's for a different day. That's for some yeah, extra content. 
<laughs> yeah, that's extra content. Uh, right, what did you get up to? Not a lot. As you know, the past few weekends I've been fairly busy. You know, I went for that big long round with dad, I, you know, on the bikes, and I went down to the British Superbikes on my bike. So I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to have a chilled one. Kids went swimming, played some Starfield, and just watched the bikes, really. So I didn't really do a lot. Did Did you edit your video? You know, the, the, the video you're going to put in? Oh, I keep forgetting too. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> oh, crap. Do you know what? I completely, I completely look. Oh my god! Shit! I said I was going to do that ages ago. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's he's having a, he's having a child weekend. He can he can edit that video. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now we'll do it. That's all right. No worries. I can't really say, and it's not like I put content on YouTube. <laughs> our YouTube we're still of our still podcast. getting comments on that Blackbird. Uh, we had another comment on today on that Blackbird video, actually. Are they mostly good? Yeah, all good. At fourteen thousand views now, nearly fifteen thousand. Fourteen thousand. You're mm. almost like a YouTube, you know, mediocre air. I know. A mediocre YouTuber. And I even had a thank what? you from someone as well. Well, we had a thank you from someone. So well, uh, on you, really. On the uh, on the video where I put the I did the um, how to put the USB onto your bike, someone put thank you very much for the tutorial. I said you're welcome. <laughs> I did a, I made a tutorial video how to put on a a, a trickle charger, but then I just felt so ashamed of myself because it's a little one two five. Who wants to see my little lawnmower? <laughs> Here's how you put the Trekwood Charger in my little 125. But plenty of 125 riders out there probably need to. There I needed to do that again as well. Needed to do that yesterday. Got my bike out, started it. Well, I tried to start it. Obviously, nothing happened. Thought, oh, get Trickle Charger on there. Just leave it on Trickle Charge. No, but I don't have a garage, so it sits outside. Ah, uh, I got you, yeah. I mean, so. Okay. So what have you been up to, anyway? I'm trying to think of what I did this weekend. Apart from watch the bikes, I don't think I've done very much. I just mm. sat and watched the bikes. Uh, I went out for a ride today. So the guys mm. I'm doing my test with, I went out and did a, a pre-test ride. So whenever you book your test, you also book, well, you've got the option to book a pre-test ride where you just go out and ride. and It's like a final check just to see where you're at and yeah. just make sure you're, you know your positions when you're coming to junctions and you know stuff like that and it absolutely bucketed it down we got out within about 10 minutes the heavens opened I've ridden the rain before but just back and forward to work I've never proper ridden the rain like on the motorway or anything it's not the nicest but, uh, experience <laughs> well the heavens opened and for about 20 minutes like, and I mean tw- uh, I mean it came down like that was heaving <laughs> it was, was, wasn't was taking time to fall out of the sky and like to be honest I enjoyed it it was a novelty it was my first time in the rain proper and uh, something they were talking about this weekend on the race they kept talking about just because it's wet doesn't mean that the tyres aren't going to grip but I noticed that yeah. on the road because I was pulling up at junctions and putting my foot down as you do yeah. and when I put my foot down I, c- I could feel the bottom of my foot sliding on the road a little bit because it was wet yeah and then in my head, I was thinking, that's gnarly, that, that my foot's sliding on the road, but my tires, you know. Yeah, no, it's around, crazy. Going, it is crazy. Going around big sweeping corners in the motorway at like 50, well, obviously you're riding to the limit, so I'm doing about 50, 55 mile an hour. But yeah. apart from that, the only other thing, I had this embarrassing thing happen to me, where, you know I normally do online shopping. Yes, yeah. Because Helen and I are both working, but as you also know, I'm not working at the minute, so I thought <laughs> I can go and I can go and do some shopping. Oh I can no! Go to the supermarket. Well, who did you offend? Shopping. I didn't offend anybody, <laughs> but well, not purposely. So I was walking around, right, and I was looking for people might already know if they listen back to other podcasts. I'm a vegetarian, right, so I don't eat meat and stuff. And uh, I was looking for vegetarian marshmallows because most marshmallows have like beef gelatin in them. So I was looking for veggie marshmallows because I wanted to make my daughter's little top hats. You get them in Northern Ireland. People from Northern Ireland will know what top hats are. But they involve marshmallows. <laughs> and, okay. Uh, so I, I seen this guy. He was lying on the floor putting doing stuff at the bottom shelf near the spices. And I thought, you know, it's a bit awkward walking up to somebody and going, you're right, mate, can you, can you help me? You know, because we're men and we don't like doing that. I do it all the so time. Nice. 
<laughs> well, I do as well, but for some reason, he was like, li- because he was lying on the floor, I thought, this guy's obviously busy. I don't really want to go yeah. to disturb him, but I'm going to have to. And he was near the spice rack, so I thought, I'll go up and I need a few spices anyway. I needed some more cumin powder or something. I've got. I'll <laughs> play with the spices. I'll ask him a question. So I walked up to him, right? And before I got the chance to ask him anything, I smelt this smell. I was like, I was like, oh my God, that he shit himself. Like he had probably <laughs> farted. And he I, he noticed as well. So he got up and walked away, right? He got up, but he walked to the other end of the aisle and started doing something else. I think he just wanted to get away. But I'm now here looking for the spice that I was originally looking for because I wanted some spice. I thought, I'll get this spice. And just as I picked up the spice, this lady came walking past me. <laughs> she came walking past me. And I just wanted oh, to be no. like, that, that wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't it was be that Zim. massive. It's him. <laughs> it's him. <laughs> <laughs> that guy there. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> but I have made eye contact brilliant. with that guy on a, f- <laughs> on a few occasions now when I walk into the supermarket. <laughs> like, there's that guy that shit himself and I got blamed for it. <laughs> uh, did he find any marshmallows? No, he doesn't have any. I didn't know that they have beef gelatin in marshmallows. Never knew that. Yeah, well, yeah, they all do, yeah. But you can mm. get veggie ones. Well, vegan mm. ones. They call them vegan ones. Uh, even jelly. You know, like normal jelly or jello. That's got beef gelatin in it. Can't eat that mm. either. Didn't know that. <clears throat> Well, now you do. Now you do. Well, I guess that's us all caught up. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I said, we got an email from last week, so a little bit of reactions to last week's show. I'll read right. this out because it's not in the yeah. doc, so I still got it in emails. Go for it. Right, as you're going to hear, as you're going to hear, this is from a friend of mine because he listens to, he'd been listening to the show and he was nice enough to email in. Right, he says... Hey guys, long time listener, first time emailer. I'm sure that's how these emails are supposed to start. Right. He goes, I'll start off by saying I know very little about bikes, apart from they have two wheels and they go fast and a super bike has a cape and saves people. I think that's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> that's me and mine. He's a bit of a nerd, right? He's got on well, actually. But I do know Sam and I will start, I will start with going to the cinema solo I can confirm it's the saddest thing you can do from the perspective of a (laughs) cinema worker, which I was for a fair while. But also, as someone who has watched movies on their own, I bloody love it. No friend or partner, ask them what's going on halfway through, or (laughs) eating super loud right in your ear. You can also make a game out of it and sit near, or when you're in an empty show, just sit near some random people. (laughs) (laughs) Now, as for dogs, I'm pretty sure people that dress their dogs and treat them up, treat them like people are the same kind of people that have a stranger in the well in their basement asking them to put lotion back in the basket. No judgment here, everyone to their own. <laughs> anyway, I love the podcast. I only really listen to the first part. Che- and that's from my mate John D. Cheers, John. Thank you very much for getting in contact. Cheers, John. That was, uh... yeah. So he just he listens, listens to the to catch up and turns off. <laughs> <laughs> he just listens to us talking nonsense and then turns off, but. That's where the best part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what's suppose. that about? over. Yeah, but I still stand by it. Going to the cinema in your own class. You should try. I have been to the cinema on my own, but that was only because I was on a course and I was on my own. And like, I had nothing to do in the evening, so I literally went to the cinema and watched like three movies in a row every night <laughs> until there was none uh, left. Chappie, Chappie's the one that... Uh, dresses his dog up and treats it like people he's referring to have you ever seen uh, or read the Hannibal Lecter movies uh, I haven't seen them now have you ever seen Silence of the Lambs isn't that the one with Anthony Hopkins in yeah hmm. so basically at the, start, at the start of Silence of the Lambs there's this psycho that's got this woman in a well and he keeps telling her to put the put this lotion back in a bottle or something. But he's basically calling Chappie a psycho, That's, which is true. He's a psychopath. Yeah. And it, it, it was just waiting for him to crack someday. Just yeah, I mean, Chappie he's definitely go. got that look of like, um, you know, like a Jeffrey Dahmer mm. or something like that. And he's, his <laughs> uncle looks like a 1930s gangster. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, his uncle's class. <laughs> Did you see the car that I sent? 
Yeah, that would look buying and I thought that, maybe he just rented that for the No, wedding. that's that's one of his many cars that he has. His many cars. Big car enthusiast, yeah. And he's a very good uh, photographer as well. Has he? Mm, yes. There you go. Right. Yeah. Well we move on with the show. Yes. It's right, the Who Am I? Never my this is a part of Never Remind Me, it turns off. Bye, John. See you, John. <laughs> All the right. best. Thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the email, mate. Uh, right, so moving on with the show. Last week it was my Who Am I? And mm-hmm. the clues were... I and we've, never, we've still not had anybody call in about her email in about Who Am I's for weeks. No. Wah, wah, wah. Anyway, I have won the 350 and the 500cc world champion a combined total of five times. My first TT win was in 1949 in the Clubman Senior TT, and my last TT win was in 1955 in the Senior TT. I'm British, I was born on the 29th of May 1923, and sadly passed away on the 1st of... 29th of March 1923, sorry, and sadly passed away on the 1st of May 2015. And, Ash, the answer was... Ah, uh, Jeff something or other. I've completely forgot it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Duke. That's it, Jeff Duke. There you go. Now, that's everywhere. The name Duke is everywhere. I don't know. I think it might have been his son or his grandson or something that started the right. whole Duke brand. But I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Somebody can email in and tell me. But Duke, you know the Duke names everywhere. They get Duke videos. I think that all comes from the Jeff Duke lineage. Right. I didn't realise that. You know, you, you know, he got that iconic, like the red background with the white duke. Mm. I think that's all to do with. I don't know if it was his son or his grandson, but I definitely think it was one of his family members that started the Duke brand. Right. And I think the Duke brand, you can tie that back to Jeff Duke. That's why I thought it was maybe more obvious than what the clues, because no, there was quite a lot me. of clues. <clears throat> not for me. I had to Google, but <laughs> at least I'm honest about it. All right. Right, this week it is your turn. It is my turn, and I tried to make this a bit more tasty, but I put the clue at the end, I think, gives it away. So, uh, I was born on the 25th of March in 1899 in New Zealand. I set the land speed record of 178.95 miles per hour on a motorcycle under 1,000cc. And in 2005, they made a film about this rider and his journey to fame and was played by Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. So there are your clues. And uh, if when you do find out who it is and you want to watch the film, it's an absolutely cracking film to watch, by the way. So, yes, anything with Anthony Hopkins on it is good. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Anything really. So I have to apologise to anybody. I'll try and get it out in the edit, but I've got a little bit of a runny nose as well. So if you hear me snort, Peppa Pig style, apologies. I'll try and get them out in the edit, but if I can't, I I do apologise. Have you got a bit of a cold? Oh yeah, <sighs> yes I do. And then I'm kind of it's running out on me as well. You know. You got you got a bit of vid. Got a bit of the COVID. I got a little bit of the vid. The vid, you know the. <laughs> Not 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 VD. What's VD? It's like some sort of sexual disease. D and V is that what they call it? D and V. Oh, you got D and V. Diarrhea and vomit. Well, I don't even vomit just diarrhea. This is the mm. nice part of the podcast. <laughs> no, I think it was because last night I made my daughter some spaghetti and like tomato ketchup and some cheese, and then I ate hers and I was like, oh, that's nice. That's what I want. So I just made. You seen the video I seen? I just made this absolute ton of spaghetti and just squeezed in like half a bottle of ketchup and threw in some grated cheese. I'm so healthy, me. And I ate the whole lot, and it's not done me any good. And I don't oh, know if I just got a bit of a runny nose. <clears throat> right. Right, that's the clues for Ash's Who Am I. Sorry, we yes. kind of digressed a little bit. It's, uh, if you... If you do find out who it is, or if you know who it is, or if you Google it, definitely watch the movie. It's based on a true story. I don't know if it's it's maybe dramatised a little bit, but I think it stays fairly true to the actual fact. It's a really, really good movie. It's got Anthony Hopkins in it. It's brilliant. Uh, and if you want to get in contact with us, with any reactions to the previous week's show, or questions, or importantly, if you want to answer the who am I... The email address is podcast at bigbadbs.co.uk. 
That's the email address you can use to get in contact with us. If you want to ask, tell, or get involved. Yeah, that's please us. do. So we're going to move on to the news, and then we're going to start talking about last week's racing. Mm. So, uh, do you want me to read out the news? It's up to you. You can or I can. Well, you go for it. Are, you, are we putting jingles in for Chippy? <laughs> no. Chippy wants <laughs> jingles and Chippy can turn up. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Okay, so this is the news. So the first bit of news I actually put in, and for some reason Chippy said this is shite, but anyway. Uh, so Jonathan Ray has managed to make a deal with Kawasaki that confirms that when he leaves to go to Yamaha, he can test the R1 in November. <laughs> Because originally they weren't going to let him. Well, I think that's fairly significant because I'm pretty sure Top Rack's not allowed to test the BMW at all. No, January. I think he is. Yeah, I, don't I think, think he is. But we we talked about this a previous week, whereas we think Top Rack, and I think we're all in agreement with this. And if you're in agreement too, you can let us know by sending us an email or something. But we think Top Rack's kind of spat the dummy out with Yamaha because they're not letting them go to MotoGP. And I think they're just being like, well, two can play at that game. You know. Yeah, not you're, really you're not testing the BMW, yeah. Whereas Johnny Ray has been quite a important ambassador for Kawasaki. And he always will be. You know, yeah, going back, definitely. going forward in his career, he'll always <laughs> be known as the guy that won six championships with Kawasaki. So definitely. I think it's fairly amicable that they're going to let him do that. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I think they should let him do it. And they have done, which is good. So that is good news for Johnny Ray, and I'm glad they are letting him test it. Um, also, uh, confirmed rides this week. Vandermark will be Top Rack's teammate next season at BMW. And Reading has moved to, is that Bonovo? Bonovo? Bonovo. Bonovo, Bonovo BMW replacing Loris Baz. So Vandermark is Top Rack's teammate. I've Really? I would have thought they'd put somebody better with Top Rack. But... Well, I don't know if uh, Scott Redden is moving to Bonovo because he wants to or if he has been pushed. Mm. But I, I, me personally, I would rate Scott Redden a bit higher than Vandermark. I would as well. And yeah. it's not... If anything, it's just because even if they're on par with each other, well, you would imagine that Scott Redden's had a better season this season because he's been in the bike longer. So, yeah, because obviously, Vandermark got injured, but mm. I was a bit surprised to see. But whenever I heard that, because it came out of like a while, that was rumored it was fairly strongly rumored a while ago that it was going to be Vandermark that was going to be on with Top Rack's teammate, and that I honestly thought, well, Scott Redden must be going to the Kawasaki then. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, no, as well. he's, but he's going to Bonovo BMW, which. So I think he's going to be Garrett Gerloff's teammate. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think Garrett Gerloff is due for be moving anywhere, is he? No, I think he's still with BMW. Mm. And then Loris Baz is going, but Loris Baz is. Uh, might crop up a little bit later in the show. So if anybody knows the format, we kind of do a silly season, so that's probably where you crop out about. Uh, yeah, the last bit of news there he's got. Uh, so also, Andy Irwin is back for Honda this weekend. Uh, Franco Baum will stay in the class as Marvel HCL Motorsport and will run in superbikes with him for the final two rounds. And finally, Alex Olsen will return to the class for the final two rounds with Team IWR. So Andy oh, Irwin is, uh, yeah, he's all healed yeah, up. It's good to see him back in the bike. He's seen him at, uh, what was the last round? Was it Brands Hatch? No, the last round was Alton Park, because I was there. Yes, sorry, the one before that was Brands Hatch. So Alton Park, after the race day, you seen... Don't know if it was on Facebook, it was on Twitter, where Andy Irwin was going round the track on the Honda. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, so he's been testing on it. He's, he's even said in his, whenever he was doing the 
that commentating and talking when they were asking him about it, he says he feels all right on it. He feels strong enough. Like he yeah. says he, he he thought himself he could have probably raced at Alton Park, but the sensible thing to do would have been to just wait another couple of weeks. Yeah. Until Donington, which they have done. Yeah, that's good to see. And uh, yeah, Frank O'Born not going back to his original championship. He's going to stay because I, I guess he's not going to be any sort of title contender because he's been out for so long but he mm-hmm. is going to stay on Superbikes for the final two rounds that's good good yeah. to see good to see him back on the bike and yes, I'm going to be uh, uh, I'm going to be really really like really crap here but I'm not sure who Alex Olsen is <laughs> I'm sorry about that mm. well you know that when it comes to British Superbikes, Chippy is a British Superbike guy. He is a British Superbike guy, and if he bothered to actually turn up, he could have shed some light on it. Yeah, so folks, if you're listening to this and you think, oh, they're not, they're doing British Superbikes a disservice, Chippy's our resident British Superbike expert. If you yes. listen to the start of the show, you'll maybe understand why it's pretty much in his family now. <laughs> Whereas, uh, yeah. I, uh... More of a, I'm more in tune with MotoGP and stuff, and and even that I don't probably don't know what I'm talking about, but uh, yeah, Chippy's our BSB. He is our expert of BSB. We as <laughs> experts, we as experts. Uh, so that's the news slash confirmed rides. Not a lot of news. Most of the news we get is all to do with who's moving where and when. And we're coming to the tasty end or the tasty point of the season now. Hard to believe it's October in a few weeks. I know. Madness, isn't it? And the thing is, MotoGP still got like, what, nine, ten rounds or something ridiculous. It's got a fair few eight, rounds still. Eight or nine rounds. Whereas right I think, what, World Supers and. World so Supers and World BSB. Super and got two, rounds, got two, la- two rounds left and MotoGP is still going, you know, miles ahead. <coughs> so yeah, MotoGP is getting so tasty, right? Imagine, now. imagine it. if MotoGP only had two rounds left, though. As it stands, that would be. Yeah, but it used to only have thirteen rounds. So mm. yeah, it would be that would be crap, though. Oh, <laughs> there's still enough. There's still enough time for somebody to run away with the championship. There is. There definitely is. Or maybe not. Right, let's get into it. Right, so last <laughs> week, or this weekend. This weekend, uh, we were at India for the first time. Yes. First time ever. Historic since the MotoGP or GPs have been going since 1949, I believe. And this is the first time they've ever been to India. So this was Billy Bollock's big day. And it Bullock. nearly didn't happen. Like, <laughs> well, it was very I've tentative. Seen. I've seen the aftermath of that. There's a lot of arguing going on between fairly well-known names, names you would recognise, who are now journalists. Right. You know, Simon Crefar and Simon Patterson, for example. <laughs> Simon Crefar is an ex-racer who kind of works more for... I don't want to say who works for who, but one of them's more entwined with Dorna and the other one's more freelance, and they're sliding each other <laughs> Because one's basically saying that the other one was, you know, making it sound like it's a disaster, and the other one's saying, "Well, you're just, you're just ham picking information that you want Dorna to put out there." Oh, it's really funny. I love Twitter. Just watching people, <laughs> I find it so hard not to just start replying and stirring the pot. <laughs> I have to you just should do. Hold my tongue. No, I don't want to do that. I want to be respected within the. No, motorcycle. what you do <laughs> is you, is you uh, you put your put your fifty pence in, and then put from the big bad bike show just at the bottom there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little caveat. No, so basically, to to put that into perspective, there are some people, not just journalists, but there's some people who are questioning why some journalists were ever saying it was as dangerous as it was. They're like they're questioning their motives as to they're basically trying to suggest that they're trying to make it into the like Formula One sort of yeah. you know, the drama. Whereas these journalists that are talking about this, they're talking to the writers and they've got every right to highlight concerns. Hmm. It's safety. Yeah. And yeah, so and I don't know who said what about, but there there is a bit of aftermath going on, <laughs> on Twitter about about that. But apparently, some of the numbers in the race were down because uh, I I read that 
some of the the Indian spectators didn't want to travel because India's a big place, isn't it? So yeah, and they're not everybody's wealthy. So I think some of them were maybe worried about putting all that time, effort, and money into traveling to Delhi to watch the race, and then that not happened. So I think a lot of potential spectators didn't go. So that's maybe why the numbers were down. And again, that comes into the fear mongering that they were highlighting, the journalists were highlighting. But I bring you back to that. They're only relaying what they can, you know, what they're seeing and hearing. So, yeah, it nearly didn't happen. How true is that? I don't know. I actually heard that Motegi in Japan isn't mm. getting homologated until Thursday. So we're <coughs> recording on Tuesday. This will go out tomorrow on Wednesday. So whenever this goes out, Japan will still not be homologated. But they've been to Motegi before. That's the difference. Yeah, they have. They've been yeah. there before. Yeah. So that's maybe why there's not so much media attention on Mm. is it dangerous is it not what i will say though is even though like obviously it very nearly didn't well let's say we never nearly didn't happen and not a lot of spectators as we expected turned up the reactions that i could hear from the fans was like they were roaring at certain points you could really hear them you could hear them like it was like jesus (laughs) christ you could really hear them mental they're 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 the most passionate crazy people. I went to a cricket <laughs> game when I was in India. I bet that I had was this little guitar. Well, it was crap because I couldn't drink. It was a dry, it was all dry. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> going to cricket and you can't drink. <laughs> but I had this little guitar, and they're like, "Oh, take your guitar. You'll definitely get on TV." But I couldn't even see a TV. But <clears throat> and they love cricket that much. Sorry, I know we're not talking about bikes, but well, the minute there was a guy in front of me. Now we were at a fifties over game, so that's like a hundred overs. So basically, it lasted about eight hours, okay? Eight hours of cricket. And there's a guy in front of me who sat with his phone at his face and he commentated the whole game to his mate over the <laughs> phone. And you imagine his mate was just sitting on the other end of the phone listening to it. And I was like, Jesus. Sad. I know, like, cricket's all right. It's not that good. But yeah, couldn't drink. I've got it. I was like, cricket's crap. Not, not drink. like, the, like uh, the old CBD in Australia. <laughs> Melbourne cricket. It's like Homer. It's like Homer Simpson whenever he goes to baseball and he's not drinking. He's like, I never understood how boring this game really was. <laughs> cricket like that. You need to get pissed. Yeah, you do. Yeah. First time I went to a cricket game was in Australia. It's class. That's when I fell in love with it. Because all I did was drink. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's move on. Right. So back to it. We were at the Indian GP. First time we were in India. First time ever. We've been recording for thirty-eight minutes. <laughs> we're only now getting onto the bikes. Oh dear. Right, so, no, it's brilliant, who cares? So the first race was the sprint race, as always. Uh, well, yeah, we'll start with the MotoGP. Go for it. And let's see who we had. So you get the MotoGP, Q2, front row was Bezeki. Bezeki had been miles faster than everybody all weekend. Hmm. It was clear to see, everybody was like, but this is Bezeki's to lose, he's so fast, he's obviously come to terms with the track a lot better than other people. He's on a Ducati, so he's going to be fast anyway. Uh, and then you've got the usual protagonists. You've got like Martin, Bagnaia, Marini, top four. And then surprisingly, you've got Mir and Marquez, who are fifth and sixth. Two Hondas yeah. in, the two, in the front two or in the second row. So I think maybe it was a, an evil, more even playing field in the fact that you know, a lot of riders never read this track before, so it no. comes down to maybe less to do with the bike and more just to do with the raw skill. And it's no surprise that you got like, you know, you got like championship winners up there. You got Banyaya, Mir, you got Quattararo, who was in the eighth. These are champion. These are like champion. Yeah. World champions who you know all came to the top. The cream rises to the top. So I thought that was a good point to make all weekend as well. That proved. Uh, right. So let's get into. It. I wrote this one out. Right. First race. Bez was fast all weekend, as I mentioned. He was in the top spot, and the race looked like his to lose. However, at turn one, excuse me, at turn one, Marini, who started fourth, went too quickly, and he couldn't get the bike stopped, and he ran into the back of his teammate. Marini crashed out, and Bez was forced off the track, and it put him right down at the back. He was on last. Yeah. Further back, turn one as well, there was some sort of collision between Paul Spagro and Braddle, Stephen Yeah, Braddle. They, they, the exact same situation happened. 
So I don't just know who I, I, it was further back, and he j- again went in too hot. Back wheel came up, brakes smashed into the back. The exact same thing. And happened. I seen that. I seen that, and I was gutted because I thought that's that really nice LCR Castrol. Honda yes, it Lover. is, and it got wrecked. Dawn. Mm. And I was like, bro, I, I, I know there was two bikes out, but I was like, come on. Mm. Right, right. So Martin or Martin got to the front of the race, and Banyaya was in second for most of the race. The excitement came from the surprise to see Honda and Yamaha towards the front. Marquez, Mir, and Quattararo, they were all looking strong. However, three laps to go, and Mir lost the front, and his race was over. And I kind of thought, even when the Honda is working well, Mir still manages to find a way yeah. to lose it. To bin but, it, yeah. Fair enough. He made up for it in the second race. He was obviously pushing it. He was... He's seen the opportunity for maybe a podium. Um, Marquez, in fact, had held hold on for the podium and Quattararo finished sixth. Meanwhile, Bez was charging through the field uh, and he was, I say miles, but he was seconds. He was significantly faster than everybody oh, else on the ah, track, yeah. even though he had to, even though he was passing people. I know the argument was, well, maybe Martin held a bit in reserve, but we know. Later on, that that wasn't the case. He ended up finishing fifth. So he in the la- in the first corner, he was last. Yeah, absolute brilliant, absolutely class. To finish fifth, that's like amazing. Yeah, you think about the people that finished in front of him. He, like he never would have caught them. They're, like they're on the same bike. They're on a year forward bike. You know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, Marquez finished in front of him, but uh, yeah. And in that race, Zarco crashed out and. Alessia Spagro, who had an absolute nightmare of a weekend, went out with a mechanical. I didn't mention it before, but did you see what happened to him in uh, qualifying? I didn't see. I didn't watch qualifying, so I didn't see what happened. So I turned it on just as qualifying was starting, right? And uh, and I saw Alessia Spagro going down the pit lane, and I thought, oh, I've just made it in time. And then, like, it took me a second to realise what was going on. His team had sent sent him out. Like, when they sent him out, he was going down the pit lane. And they're like, what are you doing? Qualifying doesn't start. Pit lane's not open. But it was only, it was something stupid. Like, it was another, it was like 30 seconds or something before the pit lane would open. So he had to trudge his bike the whole way back. And then by the time he got back, all the other bikes were out. And he missed some time oh, out right. qualifying. And, but he went mad. He went in and he was going crazy. Like, he was throwing things around, which is you know, fair enough. You'd, you'd, you'd imagine his team would know when the pit, when the pit lane. Oh opens. yeah, I'm sure there's a big clock with a timer on it. <laughs> How many seconds? Every, How many seconds till every, it opens? That was like, uh, like whenever you go to like whenever you go to do something and you do it habitually, like you do it every weekend and you turn up. Like I took my daughter gymnastics and I took her in today and I opened the gym. Uh, what what done? to the gym and there was nobody there and I had this like moment this like minute of time when I was just like is it definitely on this weekend <laughs> do I look do I look like a spin because I've brought my daughter to gymnastics when it's not on like you would think a pretty would have done that they'd have been like hold on a minute there's nobody, nobody else, else going take, oh. there's mm. no other the bikes haven't even started yet they still got <laughs> their tyre warmers on <laughs> hmm. I'll send them out anyway. Go for it. Just go get a lap in. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, no, anyway. Dear. So that was that was the sprint race. Martin won it. Banyaya came second. Uh, I was going to say Alex Marquez. He wasn't in the race because he crashed in qualifying as well and broke collar. Oh no! He broke something. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe a rib or something. I don't know. Ma- Marquez though it. in third. Brilliant. Yes. I, race, well, do you know what? Race, I was really yeah. happy to see him back on the podium. But that's what I was saying. I don't know if the Hondas work any better or if it's because nobody had been to that track before. Maybe it was simply because nobody had been to the track before, they get no DNA or no DNA, they get no DNA. They get, well, no DNA <laughs> in the track. They've no idea how things work. It maybe adds a very leveler. Yeah. A very leveler. Maybe just a level playing field where it's, you know, the best riders will get to the top first and. Like I said, it's no surprise that there was world champions at the front, regardless no, of no, what bike you're on. No, he rode, he rode it really well. He rode it really well. Um, like I said, yeah, I was, like you say, because nobody had been there before, I think it was just down to pure skill. Yeah. 
And uh, it was good to see Quattararo up there as well. Like, yeah. Just to see these riders, these really good riders. These are the guys we want to see. Like, I and I don't mean I don't mean any disrespect to like Alessia Spargaro or Ralph Fernandez or, or even Johan Zarco. I love <sighs> Johan Zarco. I love watching them. But you know the guys we want to see at the front are the guys that are going to win championships and can win championships. And I know arguably everybody there can win a championship, but you want the best riders on the grid at the front battling mm. for it. I was, Definitely. I was so, for that, it was a good weekend. Yeah. It was nice to see somebody else up there other than just Ducati and Aprilia all the time. It was Ducati and Aprilia. Yeah, it was good. Really good. Very good sprint. Shame about Let's Bez. Like, see. But... Yeah, it was. It was a shame because you think how many more points he would have had. I oh, know. Because he's... he's like before this weekend I was thinking is Bez actually a title contender I'm not entirely sure but he's not complete out of it he's under 50 points like yeah so. he is he's definitely still within a shot especially with so many rounds left right let's go into the feature race and then we can talk about it more right mm-hmm. this time round there was less drama at turn one Martin got to the front with Banyaya and Bez second and third yeah Martin got to the front and Banyaya and Bez were second and third Marquez, Mir and Quattararo also got good starts. Right, it wasn't long before Martin got to the front uh, with his impressive pace. Martin, Banyaya and Marquez, did I mean to say Bez? It wasn't long before Bez got to the front with his impressive pace, sorry. <coughs> Martin, yeah. Banyaya and Marquez raced for second, but then Marquez lost the front. I was gutted. I was did, actually yeah. gutted whenever Marquez crashed. Yeah. Like I thought I thought Bez is in the race this time, or Bezek is in the race this time. You're probably looking at fourth at best. I think he was mm. pushing it too hard to try and stay with the Ducati. He so was. The front. And did you get the impression watching it that a few years ago, maybe pre-arm surgery, he could have maybe saved that? Yeah, I think he was trying to save it with his with his elbow like he used yeah. to, and it just didn't have the strength yeah. in it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, but it wasn't even that bad of a crash. He kind of just went down and slid, and then he just... But obviously he came off so... He, he went. He, yeah, he, he didn't, did go, his, he didn't he did go down his. too many places, though. He ended up slotting back into eighth, I think. Yeah, he got eighth or ninth. Yeah, he went down a bit, but I think he raced quite well. I think he was just mm. doing well that weekend. Right, so Marquez loses front. Later, Benyaya would pass Martin, but then he also crashed as well. Oh, I was watching it, and Hello. you could hear a bike slide. You could hear a bike slide now, and they're like, "Oh, somebody's crashed!" And then the commentators were like, "Oh, Benyaya, Benyaya's crashed, Benyaya's crashed." <laughs> And I was jumping up and down. I, was, I like Banyaya. <laughs> I don't even dislike him, but you know, just get so excited. And I'm yeah. not, you, know, you don't get excited when somebody crashes, but Banyaya was up and he was walking, and he's just like, oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, so I reacted Banyaya, the same. That's right, so Banyaya crashed as well. He loses 20 valuable points because he was easily in second. And. So Bez won comfortably towards the end of the race. Martin seems to be he seemed to be struggling. Jorge Martin seemed to be struggling with the pace. Mm. And he looked all over the place. Like he slowed right down, he sped up, he slowed down. And then towards the end he goes right off at like turn four or something. He's all mm. over the place. Quateraro comes past him and he just kinda realizes what's going on. So he picks the pace up, cuts the nose of Quateraro. And by this stage you're thinking, What's wrong with his bike? We, yeah. we didn't know anything at this time. We're just like, What's wrong with his bike? What's going on? And then there's a bit of a race. The Ducati power just takes over. He gets over the line. Oh, and we forgot about Zipgate. Zip oh, yeah, yeah. The whole way through the race as well. And then he had to zip it back up at one point, didn't he? I didn't think he was going to get all the way up there. But yeah, that, that, move, that move that you mentioned against Quattararo, that was probably one of the gutsiest moves I've seen in a while. When he... When he um, did yeah, he, he went round the yeah. front of them. He went round the front of it. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ! <laughs> like, Qu- Quateraro <laughs> wasn't very happy either. Like, you seen? No, he wasn't. His reaction. Though. Yeah, but the thing is, if you'd have said to Quateraro at the start of the race, you'll get a podium this weekend. He would have mm. bite your hand off. So, yeah, I don't think he was. I don't think Quateraro was particularly upset that he didn't get second. I think he was just like really annoyed by the move that. He probably shat him. his pants. That's probably what he did because he wouldn't have been expecting that. 
Oh, Jesus. And then we get to the end of the race and we find out that poor old Martin is like really, really badly dehydrated. He is, yeah, because you could see he was like, he was like freaking leaning on the tank, wasn't he? So I thought he had arm pump that. at first. Yeah. So, yeah, it was Simon Crayfire was saying maybe he wasn't, maybe he was putting it on a little bit because maybe his chest protector had come out the way Quattararo's did and he wanted to go in and hide it, but then obviously that's not because if he fainted. <laughs> like, yeah. He actually fainted at Park Fermi, so I don't. I think he genuinely was dehydrated. But there was the whole zip gate because they've they've checked it and they've realised that at no point was he ever zipped up. So right. I think a lot of them. I think a lot of them before their warm up lap, or maybe they come in the warm up lap because it was so hot. They might have unzipped it just before the race, and, and he's forgotten got to, to zip, zip it, it up. up. Yeah, yeah. But he still had his so chest protector of, in, though, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he still had that in. But there's a bit of controversy as to whether he should have been deducted time or something. Because mm. obviously Yamaha are saying, well, we were deducted time whenever it happened. Yeah, yeah. but Quattararo Quat- ripped, Quat- out his, he ripped out his bloody chest piece and lobbed but it. It says, it says in the rules, like, there's, like, <coughs> last point, this point, this point. I could look it up, but... Who cares? You know, it's in the rules, all right? Mm. If you want to look it up and know what the actual rule is, listeners, you look it up. I could look it up, but you're not allowed to do it, right? You you're, you have to be zapped up, but yeah, Quattararo unzapped his. Fuck this chest protector, right? That's the first swear word all episode, 50 minutes. We could have made this one not explicit. I'm always going to put explicit because I'm scared. <laughs> Fair enough. Some of us. Somebody will listen. <laughs> somebody, somebody listen to it one week and be like, oh, it's not explicit. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the biggest talking point, really, of like Marquez did well, class, but whatever. You know, Joan Mayer got a fifth place. That's also good. Quattraro got a third place. That's good. These are all big talking points in normal yeah. weekend. But the biggest talking point was. Peko by Nyaya crashed and gave away 20 points. And now and Martin is 14 points off of first, off of the it top only point. 14? It's 14 points for, for Jorge Martin. I think it's 13 points. I thought it was 14. He's got 279 and by Nyaya's got 292. Oh, maybe it is it's then. It's 13. 13. And then 13. I think Bez is only 40 points. Bears has got two. Bears has got two four eight. So he is at 42, 44 points. That's and there's still nine rounds to go. And there's still nine rounds to go. Like you go back further than that, and uh, Brad Bender's hundred points away. Like <coughs> mathematically, he can still do it, but you have to think. That nah. If, if Banyaya throws it away. Johan Mir will win it, and if Johan Mir throws it away, Bezzetti, you know, I think Brad yeah. Bender's maybe a bit too far away. I mean, it was interesting, it. because right at the start of the season, when we started doing the podcast, we all thought, you know what, Brad Bender's a fucking title contender here. Oh, well, he still is. He still of. is, he still is, but I, I can't, I can, I can see it's obviously, it's going to be between Bagnaya, um, I think Roy realistically, Martin at the start of the season... We all got a bit carried away with how well KTM were doing at the start. Yeah, because they they did they did start off amazingly. But you know, next year, I still and that's going to sound bad. I still think they need a like a top class rider. Brad Bender is good. Hmm. Jack Miller is good, but I don't think any of them's what I think they need. Because for years, Ducati had a bike that could have won a MotoGP. And didn't up until ride Jorge him. Lorenzo, they had Jorge Lorenzo and they just didn't give him enough time. Yeah, they didn't need the rider. You think about, I think Andre, Andre Iannone, or not Iannone. Davizioso. Andre Davizioso, Andre Davizioso could, uh, yeah. I think he could have uh, won the title. You know, he he was, he had the bike to win the title at least. Yeah. And I think KTM are kind of there. They're like, they've got a bike which is, Almost, if not good enough, they just don't have the rider as such. Just stick Danny Pedroza on it instead. <laughs> that makes it sound like it was shitting on Brad Bender, but at the end of the day, this is like you know, this championship's the, the, the world's best, so yeah, 
you need you need that level. Mm. Brad Bender will probably be like, go do you one, I'm good enough. And he maybe is, maybe it is the bike. Maybe the mm. bike just needs a bit more. Bit more. Anyway, yeah, it's getting tasty at the top. It is. And there's still, like you say, another nine rounds to go. That's like that's so many. There's like still another, what, 370 points. There's still like, what, 350, 340 points up for grabs. Like, I better hope it, that uh, Bagnaya doesn't lose his head now. I hope not. I hope not. Like, I don't mind if Jorge Martin wins or if, well, obviously you're a Bezeki fan, you want Bezeki to win. Yeah. But I don't mind if any of them wins or any of them loses, but I don't want to see any of them just completely fall off a cliff. No, no. Yeah. I don't want to see it, like, and be like, oh, well, he's out of the title, because I want a three-horse race to the end would be brilliant. Yeah, it would. More interesting, more tasty, as you say. Very tasty. Very tasty. Well, that's a MotoGP. If you have any opinions on what happened in MotoGP and you want to get in contact with us and you want to, or if we've missed anything that we didn't talk about and you want to highlight, or if you want to mention, you know, the LCR livery and how nice you thought it was to see it on the grid, or... It was lovely. Anything at all. It was really nice. It's, 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 it pays homage to my favourite livery. I love the Castro Honda. No, I like the Castro. It's very good. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get in touch and say anything at all, it's podcast at bigbadbas.co.uk and we're going to move on to Moto 2, yeah? <clears throat> Moto mo- 2, yeah. Right, I wrote this out as well, so you all right if I read it? Yeah, go for it. So, uh, excuse me. So when qualifying, Dixon looked like he was going to take pole, pole position and then just at the end... Pedro Costa comes in and takes it away from him. And we're like, oh, Pedro Costa's got pole position. And then Jack Dixon was like, well, hold on a minute. I've got another lap up my sleeve. And he came out and like just at the very end, the day and death of qualifying, bam, throws in the fastest lap. And we're like, Jack Dixon has got some pace this weekend. This is good. Yeah. So Jack Dixon's on pole. We're all excited. He's going fast. He looks confident. Takes off, gets off to a good start, and lo and behold, there's a massive pile up in turn one. Wasn't there just five bikes involved? Yes, there was. There was Chantra, is it, what's Alcona, Al- 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 Alcona, what's his name? Oh, God. Hang on. <laughs> there's it... Viette. Not a girl, was it? Had a. Oh. Oh, I know his name. What's his name? Alcoba, yeah. Alcoba, yeah. I'm pronouncing her. Alcoba, yeah. Alcoba. Yeah. Right, so them five are all, uh, they all basically scattle into each other in turn one. But there was like three the bikes rest... piled on. There was three bikes high. Like and one there was a dude sk- at the bottom of it. And, he, and they were having a go at him, and he's like, mate, my leg's stuck. He's like, he's trying to get out from <laughs> under the me. bike, and they're going, hey, Let what are you doing? Here. <laughs> Let me out here and I'll show you what for. <laughs> Don't hold me back. Don't hold me back. Come on, mate, hold me back. <laughs> <laughs> if this bike wasn't on top of me, I'll tell you what. <laughs> was it not Alcoba's fault, though? The yeah, whole mate, thing. Yeah. I think it was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. But it was t- that turn one's about hairy because it's, it's almost very like a hairy. turn. Isn't it? Mm. But you'd think they would be like, right, let's just not go bumbling into this too fast. Let's take your time. Get <laughs> yeah. right around. But the racers, yeah. The racers are like... Pays, ah. pays to get to the front, doesn't it? <laughs> so at the front of the race, uh, first la- or first corner as well, Jack D- and that's kind of caveat for what was going on the whole race, Jack Dixon is going in and Lopez tries to undercut him and... But Lopez runs out wide. Anyway, the first lap, Dixon... Oh, Arbolino and Acosta are all racing and then the red flag comes out as we expected with that five bike pile up yeah god I'm so tired tonight I gotta to go to bed earlier and stop playing Starfield <laughs> right so they restart the race again Dixon gets off to a great start until they come to turn one and then once again Lopez dives up the inside of him absolutely pointless move because he Far takes himself aggressive. wide he takes Dixon wide Dixon's down to about 4th or 5th, maybe even 6th place. Lopez is down behind him, I think, 
what was he think? All oh, race. Like, that's the second time, first turn, and he does the same thing. He obviously had it in his head, I'm going to dive underneath. Yeah. Right, so this is this is a sign of things to come. So you know what we're leading up to. Listeners, if you've watched the race, you know what we're leading up to. Yeah. Uh, so for the first few laps, there was a bit of a scrapping between Garcia, Arbolino, Acosta. Dixon was further back, racing with Lopez and Roberts, trying to recover from Lopez's fucking shit move. Uh, and then the biggest talking point for us, at least as British fans, was that Lopez... Uh, well, I think Dixon passed Lopez, and then Lopez... Well, I've, I've wrapped down here. <laughs> Dixon passed Lopez, and Lopez tried to retake Dixon. I say try, but he blatantly just threw his bike yeah. at Dixon. He, he, did, he, he, did a, Dixon. he did a Sam Lowe's, didn't he? You know, when he wiped yeah, Sam Lowe's like, out, it did the same thing. Yeah, it was like whenever... Uh, it was like whenever Tommy Bridewell said, if I can't ride past you, I'm going to ride through yeah. you. Lopez literally said, I'm going to put my bike there. And ride through you. And <laughs> Or like whenever whenever Homer Simpson says, okay, pie, I'm just going to go, hum, hum, hum. And if you eat, it's your fault. <laughs> well, uh, Lopez did. Lopez was like, I'm just going to, you see that where your bike is? I'm just going to put my bike there. And if you crash, it's your fault. Yeah, he just he basically just read, he read it, like we're 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 trying to make fun of it, but in our opinion, maybe slightly biased being British supporters, but in our opinion, he he read into Jack Dixon. He did he? definitely. He fucking definitely. knocked him off, and he knocked himself off as well. The tit. Yes, he did. But far Jake, too aggressive. Jake then um, he then rejoined though, didn't he? And then he, he had a, and then he, he had a second later. crash. And that's when yeah. he, that he, but you don't know he what you don't know what state his bike's in, what state his head's no, in. No, no, such a shame I because he to... qualified so well. Yeah, top. He could have won that race. Yeah, he, he genuinely, I genuinely believe he could have won that race. I, now, I do as well. I I think he's too far away to be a title contender anymore this mm. year. But that still doesn't mean that we don't want our you know our our British rider to win a race. In fact, I think every British rider this weekend got knocked off. Every what? Well, I I don't know if uh, going into Moto Three, I don't uh, know yeah. if Scott Ogden got knocked off or if he crashed in front of was it Sasaki? No, I think or Scott. Suzuki? No, Scott Ogden. I'm pretty sure Scott Ogden got knocked off as well. Yeah, they, I thought he crashed in front of Suzuki and then Suzuki ran into him and then he crashed. Oh, I don't know. Mate, I, I don't, don't know. Like, I say that I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm not, have to maybe rewatch that. Bit. I genuinely, I genuinely don't know. You're maybe right. Like. But I thought he got knocked off, and then I seen it, and I was like, "Oh, actually, he fell off." Him. <laughs> yeah, not a great weekend for us Brits as usual. <sighs> and who was it? Josh Watley. I think Josh Watley got to the last corner before he was taken out in moment yeah, three. But Sam Lowe's got knocked off as well. Shock. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> well, no, but it came up as it came up as crash, and when I was watching it, I was like, "Oh, there's a shock." Sam Lowe's has come off. But then when I looked, obviously looked at the replay, he'd actually got knocked off. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Sam Lowe's. He, he's just I, literally going into every race thinking, for fuck's sake, get me to the World Superbikes, for Christ's sakes, please. <laughs> I just, uh, I just know him. <laughs> Sam Lowe's going to crash. <laughs> Sam Lowe's, the crasher. I think they were like, right, Sam, so what's happening is your your teammate Tony is kind of falling off the ball a bit. He's not up near the top and we're not getting enough TV time. So if you crash the bike, then we can, at least our, the cameras will look at the bike and we'll see some of the sponsors. So can you do that for us? <laughs> you, you just care, you're going to World Super Bowl. Yeah, bike. just throw it, throw it down the road for his mate. <laughs> No, I I really like Sam Lowe's. I, yeah. I say I, I feel like I say that's every week. Like trying to defend him or trying to defend my opinion, but he's such a good rider, and I I, feel, I genuinely feel it. At one stage, he was a title contender in Moto Two, and he's still fast. He's proved it this year. He's still fast enough to win races. Just, he is, yeah. Just can't but, stay yeah, on it. It's almost it's almost every race now. He's crashing, and you have to think it's maybe a bit of a mental problem, like. Maybe. Does he really want to be there anymore? Just wants to get out. But yeah, every Brett crashed or was taken <laughs> out or something this week. What's yeah. going on? Oh, fucking no. 
Like it was it was it the Indian fans putting a hex on them for the British colonialism? <laughs> they were like, <laughs> they were like burning their incense and drinking their chai and being like, British riders must crash. <laughs> yeah, so let's get into the Moto Two and the results of the race. So Moto Three. Well, I would just go to Moto Two. Oh, what well, Moto Two so results? Of course, okay. yeah. Acosta won the race. Yeah. Arbolino yeah. came second, which is good, because recent form Arbolino has been... He has falling been... Back a bit. Yeah, falling back. And Mark VDS were expecting that on the flyaways, Arbolino will be a little bit stronger. And I think they were hoping that, as like last year, that come the flyaways, Pedro Acosta might drop down a bit. But if Andy has anything to go by, he's obviously grown in confidence and... Skill for the past year, so that might not happen. Pedro Costa won, and third place was Joe Roberts, which is it's not often you see, like he's not a bad rider, but it's not often you see him up the sharp end or mm. on podiums. The American rider, so that was good to see. I always like to see an American up there, just like I like to see Brits, America, or well, I like to see British, I like to see Americans, I like to see Australians, yeah. It's not that I don't like to see, and you know, I would love to see a Japanese rider up the sharp end as well. Yeah, that would be these cool. are the these are the the nationalities that I grew up watching. You know, like Kevin Swans, Mick Doohan, uh Nora Fumi Abe. You know, these, these are the people I like watching. You know, like British riders. Like, but now it's just all Spanish and Italian. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that, but they're just a bit too much. Mm. It's like when you eat pizza every day of the week and it gets to Saturday and you're like, oh, can we just have a good old burger left, Ray? I don't know. Pizza's good. <laughs> pizza is good. I love pizza. Mm. And as this was in India this weekend, I love Indian food. Oh, God, I love Indian food. So yeah, good. It is good. Right, so that's top three. I don't really care about the rest of it. <laughs> if there was, if there was, if there was ever a week for Jack Dixon to get off his bike and start shouting "ban him, ban him," surely Lopez is Lopez is right up there. They yeah. must be thinking, they must be thinking, God, Lopez, you're making it very difficult for us. Like, they really, yeah. It's... He has. If this was a crime drama, they'd be saying he got a previous there, right? Yeah, he's got form. <laughs> <This one. laughs> he, he did. <laughs> Here's his record, and he threw like a big file with about yeah. four hundred million pages. Yeah, but like one of them scrolls where they open it, it just sort of like rolls along yeah. the floor. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Massive picture of him and Sam Lowe's kicking ass. <laughs> And my shocked face because Sam Lowe's crashed. Right, so let's get into Moto Three. Right, I've not wrote much for Moto Three. Right, this is what I've written for Moto Three, and I'm sorry if there's any Moto Three fans out there who are still listening to the show. I'm sure you're probably not, but <laughs> anybody listening to the show who thinks my Moto Three notes aren't very good, I apologise. You can email in and tell me what you think. Uh, so for once, Moto Three actually was a little boring, as I recall. Yeah, it wasn't uh, that great. Masia ran away with it from pretty much the very start. There was a good race towards the end between Toba and Sasaki, which Toba won, and came second. Holgado came fourth, which is an improvement considering his current form. David Alonso came fifth. Now I know there was a bit more racing throughout, but Moto Three is usually well to well. And it's usually really, really exciting. But yeah. This, yeah, this week it wasn't. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that we're not used to seeing somebody just take off. No. Which happened this week. Messiah just took off. He was like five and a half seconds in front of anybody else. Yeah, he did. And, um, yeah, obviously Alonso has been doing well the past couple of things. But still to come fifth is pretty decent. Because he was quite far back at one point. Yeah, he was he qualified 18th. Yeah, and he to, to come fifth did really well. Um, and I think uh, Dennis Onchu was pretty fast. They expected that Dennis Onchu would be a contender this weekend. But... But... 
What did he do again? He had a penalty, I'm didn't he, where he had to start at the back of the grid. Why I don't you? know what he did. I can't, I honestly can't remember. It must have been something to do with qualifying. What did Dennis Onju do? Well, I think it was something to do with he black flagged for some reason. He was. He was asked to he come was, in. He was, he was asked to come in and he didn't. And for no, that, right, so I, I think I remember now. He crashed. Did he crash? And he was black flagged. He was asked to come in, and they wanted they wanted him to go see the medical as well. Medical, yeah. The medal tunner, and he didn't. And he ignored that. Mm-hmm. So they gave him. He had to start at the back of the grid, and he had to do a long lap penalty. He did, yeah. So he completely screwed his own weekend. Because I even questioned. I was like, they knew he was starting at the back. This must have happened in warm up or, or practice, because they knew he was starting at the back of the grid before. Uh, before qualifying, so I was like, "Why is he even? Why is he even qualifying? Why is he even in qualifying? He got through to Q two. I was like, "Why is he even taking part?" Yeah, so why? Yeah, if he's going to be at the back of the grid anyway, I suppose in a way, it's like well, apparently because obviously well, none of quick, them have been to none of them have been to uh, India before. There is that. He's obviously got through to Q two, so it's more practice on the track for him. But. Uh, I basically asked the question to somebody. I was like, why is this? Why is this happening like that? And they got back to me and they said that his crew chief, let's see, Aki Ayo is currently in the race control appealing, that's his crew chief, to the steward's decision. So Aki Ayo was arguing the decision. So if he would have won his uh, argument... I guess, for the want of a better word, if he had won that, then Dennis on choose qualifying would have stood. So if he would have got like second or third or whatever, it would have stood. If he had won his argument, obviously he didn't, so there was no chance. And there was a battle like, oh, can't Dennis on choose do it? And it's like, come on, it's just start at the back of the grid and do a long lap penalty. He's never going to do it. No. But yeah, David Alonso was in 18th. I think he started in 18th, qualified yeah. 18th. Not great qualifying, but he's no. proved before that it doesn't really matter how he qualified, so you can still win. Obviously, this week's not the same because the whole uh, pack didn't stay together. No. This weekend, Messiah, or Messiah was a lone wolf. He was, Ready. yeah. Did really well. But, did really yeah, well. but it's, and it's, it's very rare for that to happen, really, in Moto 3. Yes, it was very rare. And yeah, and then as we already mentioned, so let's go into. As we already mentioned, uh, Scott Ogden crashed with Suzuki. I'm not sure who caused the crash. I'm not saying you're wrong, Ash. I, I've only seen it once, and it looked to me like Scott Ogden fell off in front of Suzuki. Mm. But maybe, maybe Suzuki knocked him off, and that's what happened. And Tatsuki Suzuki. Josh Watley must... I'm pretty sure Josh Watley crashed. I'm pretty he sure he did as well. The bike. I he think must he have been he, the bike. Yeah, he must have rejoined. Because he finished in 16th, but he was 30 seconds behind. But the people in front of him... Dennis Onchu beat him, funny enough. But the people in front of him were Yamanaka, who was four seconds in front of him, and Fillon. And... Aji Aki, or his name is... So I'm wondering, I'm pretty sure something knocked him off or ran into him or got in his way. How for long was he? Anna <laughs> didn't come last. <laughs> Anna Carrasco <laughs> didn't come last. But she didn't yeah, get a point. 19th, no. Ash. 19th. Nah, she's not, she's not going to get a point. Chippy made no, a very good not, bet, though. That's not far away from a point. I wouldn't, if you don't want to give blood, I wouldn't give blood yet. There's still another nine... <laughs> Still there are nine rounds to go. Nineteenth is not far off a point. Like, come on. There's what? There's 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 riders, nineteenth. She was four places away. Could you imagine whoever Josh Watley crashed into? Because I'm pretty sure he crashed into somebody and somebody might have crashed with them. If they hadn't got back in the bike, she'd have been seventeenth. 
two places away from a point. I think if any of the weekends she was going to get a point, it would have been this weekend, and she didn't. I think Mategi throws up a few. I think that a few people can crash at Mategi as well because mm. Mategi. I don't think it's always guaranteed to be dry. I think there might be a bit of uh, might rain a little bit. Japan, you know, it's hit or miss. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I would make my it would make my year if she did, but I don't think she's gonna. <laughs> so for anybody that's anybody that's still listening, Chippy and Ash have got a, a bet on. Uh, so basically, Ash at the start of the year stupidly, just for a bit of a joke, said that he thinks Anna Carrasco is going to win the championship. <laughs> Chippy was like, he's normal. Oh, you're such an idiot! <laughs> and uh, long, long story short, Ash was like, well, she must be going to get at least a point. And Chippy was like, she won't get one point. And they end up betting on it, and the bet is. If Chippy loses the bet and Anna Carrasco does get a point, even just one point, Chippy has to do his CBT and buy a motorbike. That's the big <laughs> part. He needs to do his CBT and buy a motorbike. And if Ash loses the bet and Anna Carrasco doesn't get any points, Anna Carrasco just has to... Or not Anna Carrasco, Ash has to get a tattoo. Imagine you get Anna Carrasco to do it with you. Ash has to... Uh, <laughs> Get he has to give blood, and you're all but ready just to give blood now, aren't you? I am, you're, yeah. I'm like, you're, yeah. You're, she, can I just book it? You know, like because I don't think she's gonna get a point. You're almost ready to throw the tile in. Yeah, I think I am. And then even if she gets a point I anyway, think... Chippy will then have to do the, you know, do it, do the CBT anyway, and then have to at least give blood as well. See, I was thinking if you don't want to give blood, like if I, I, there's nothing wrong with giving blood, I would. Encourage people to give blood. Should give blood. I should I've got give no blood. problem with giving done blood. It, done it a few times. But I thought if you really don't want to do it, I've got another idea. But we'd have to run it by Chippy. He might listen to this podcast. He should. But I was thinking, have you ever heard of the one chip challenge? No. Oh, have you never heard of the one chip challenge? No. Where you, you eat a really really hot chip. It's like the hottest pepper in the world. It's just one like Dorito. All their brands are available, but it's just like one sort of. Oh chip. yes, I have. I think I know what you're on about now. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not so eating I, that. <laughs> I never write back to Armoy. I was talking to my mates about it, and my sister was like, "Oh, them dumbasses tried to do the one chip challenge, and they were all like, oh, who cares?'" And one one of my mates who was pissed, he thought he'd be the big man. He tried to open it with his mouth. And whenever he opened it, he says all the chilli dust went round his face and then his eyes and his eyes all <laughs> swole up and he couldn't see and his face went red and he was like, ah, oh, and he was being sick. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think That's I'd rather true. rather give blood than do that. <laughs> oh, I thought that would be a good idea, could do one chip challenge. No, but, oh, I think that's good. No. <laughs> right, so... Uh, yeah, that's MotoGP, Moto2 and Moto3 done. If you have anything to say about that, you can get in contact with us, podcast, bigbadbs.co.uk. I'm sure you probably won't, but opportunity and option is there to do so. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my wife just came in there. Oh, yeah. I know, Helen. I know, Helen. <laughs> she must walk in here and think, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you saddo. Stop being so sad. Do you know what? I I think she's she's been with you that long now. She's just like, nah. <laughs> Will he ever grow up? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Gonna play games. Do you, do you know what's funny? Like I seen a, a meme the other day which was like uh, what are you gonna do when you uh, an old man and retire? And there's a picture of like uh, an old man like sat just playing video games, just playing Xbox. It's like that's all we're gonna do when we retire: is just sit and play fucking Xbox. We're, we're, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm a bit older than you, but we are the first real proper generation of gamers. Yeah, like I was playing like in the late eighties and early nineties. I was playing Mario and stuff. Mm. So I kind of feel like I have moved with. And, yeah, I, I feel that as wave. well. Yeah, and whenever we're whenever we're like eighty and we're old and decrepit, like the computer game world will know 
that we exist and we like playing games. And they'll be making games for us whenever we're 80. We'll be the first 80 year old. We will be. We'll be the first 80 year old who we'll be purposely making games for. And the games, will they'll, they'll try and think of some way that they can make games that can help with the likes of dementia and Alzheimer's as well. And they can adapt that into computer games. And we'll be the first people to play that and keeping our cognitive re- responses alive through the act of video games and that in turn may allow us to ride our motorbikes for a bit longer as well so anybody that's got anything against video games fuck off <laughs> except from you the video game pod. you know you're just going to be freaking sat there be like uh what what game is this <laughs> <laughs> have i shit my pants <laughs> that'd be a good game have i shit my pants <laughs> Be an old man on the screen. (laughs) 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 I imagine that's like a game that Rick and Morty would have played in that arcade. (laughs) Hey, Morty, come and play this. Check this game out. It's about an old man that shits his pants. (laughs) Right, we got to move on. Yeah, we really do. Okay. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> right. I don't have made any notes for all sort of bikes. I never would make made any. Uh, so, right. Can you remember anything about race one, race two, or race three? Right, race one. Uh, yeah, like I said, not went back and made any notes, so I'm doing this completely from memory. We're going to skip over it pretty quick. It's the same three protagonists all the time. I know Ronaldo's making a bit of a resurgence ever since he found out he's being kicked off. Yeah. Ducati. So Ronaldo is trying to prove a point because he has to try and get a ride for next year. Mm. More in that in silly season. But it is the same three protagonists again. I'll tell you who is impressing me as well, though, and that's Petrucci. Petrucci has got yes. so much potential. Yes, but. Petrucci's roughly the same age as Banyaya. Like he's getting mm. on a bit. He is, but he's, he's fast. He is fast. Yeah, he's. A, I'm pretty sure he's a MotoGP winner. Did he not win races in MotoGP? Yeah, he's definitely won won races. So we know he's fast. We know mm-hmm. that. It's just that a few rounds ago, I think it was at Donington. I think at Donington Park he was fast, and I think he made a few mistakes there as well. Mm. It's because he was so eager. He was so eager to get a good start because he had pace. It's the same this weekend. He was fast, but then whenever it came to it, whenever it counted, he throws up the road. So yeah. yes, he has fa- I'm a I'm a fan of Patrici. I think he'd a decent rider. And I I'd, I'd argue they could he could maybe have been a contender for the Aruba Ducati second ride, but hmm. Again, don't want I somebody Ducati younger, want them. Yeah, yeah, they do. But uh, yeah, once again, it was pretty much the, the three protagonists, the same as always, who are at the front. There was Johnny Ray, Top Rack, uh, Bautista, and. Uh, but once again, as seen in recent weeks, Bautista wasn't going to get it all his own way. Hmm. Johnny Ray had some good starts um, though. He was he was getting out in front straight away. His starts were really really good, and that was because they have changed something on his bike. Um, I can't remember what this. Yeah, they've, I can't remember what they've said. They've changed. It was something to do with they've changed something on the bike to aid the extra five hundred revs that they've given to the Kawasaki. So I believe that's why he was getting the good uh, acceleration at the start. They did say on mm. the they put the but the commentators did say what they'd done to it, but I can't remember exactly what part it was. Mm-hmm. I tell you, he was good as well this weekend, and that was um, Locatelli. Well, I was good on there talking about how it was the same three protagonists. I was going to come to the big main point that we have yeah. to talk about, but. I think I'm doing Ronaldo a disservice because he did a little bit better this weekend than what he I did, can remember. Yeah. So. Yeah, he won race one, so he did he yeah. did a lot better. I just got the results up, and I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I did tweet about it. I sent a tweet. I put a tweet on the Big Bad Bike Show. Follow us on Twitter. But I put a Twitter. <laughs> I put a tweet on there. So 
like it was towards the end of the race and I thought anybody and this is kind of how I read it goes anybody that's tuning in now is going to turn on the TV and go oh same as always Batista Ray top right they're going to look again and go hello that's not Batista that that's that's Ronaldo. Ronaldo's <laughs> going to win the race. Uh, yeah, Locatelli did do well. I, I rate Locatelli. He's a decent rider. He's yeah, he's, I think he's good. Uh, and then Petrucci, who started last, dead last, because he didn't get a qualifying time, and I'm pretty no. sure he started last, finished fifth. So, yeah, he was fast this weekend. Unbelievable. To... But, yeah, the biggest talking point on that one was at the towards, like, I think about 17 laps in or something. Maybe not 17. Maybe not as much, because that was his second crash. So maybe it was about 12, 13 laps in. Hmm. I can't remember exactly. But on the reverse corkscrew, Batista came off the bike. He stacked it, didn't he? That was a big, Wah! that was like another one of them Banyaya moments where they're like, it oh my was. God, Batista's crashed. And like, ah. I know. I think I was out. I think I was out walking my dog at the time. Oh, you were listening to it on the radio, weren't you? Were you li- did you say you maybe were listening it a, to it? Maybe it was a Benyaya one. I was out walking my dog. Maybe because I didn't watch them all live. I just caught up with it all after. Um, no, it was the it was the Joe Joyce I was listening to on the radio. Oh yeah, of course it was. Sorry, <laughs> That's, yeah, the Joe Joyce. <laughs> Let's not go into that or we'll be here all night. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm fine with, but I'll be getting drunker. And... Right, anyway. Yeah, so Batista came off. I was jumping up and down. Mm. Again, I don't mind if Batista wins the championship. I really I, want oh, Top actually, Rack to win, though. I really want Top Rack I to win. Re- I want Top Rack to win because, A, it means Johnny Ray's on the championship winning bike next year. It means B, Top Rack has to know that he's leaving the championship on a bike when he spat his dummy out and he shouldn't have. And C, earlier on in the season, Chappie was all like, what super bikes is crap. We knew Bautista's going to win. And if he didn't win, I'd just be like, ha, 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 you specky little nerd. <laughs> you lost. With there being two rounds left, do you think realistically Top Rack can do it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can. What mm. what's the last track? The last track's in Spain though, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. That was in Spain. Aragon's in Spain. Oh yeah, I suppose. You crashed. Yeah, it's um is it northern Spain, Aragon? Good, isn't it? Oh fuck, my geography's terrible, mate. I don't Ask know. Helen, she'll know. <laughs> she's I can hear her upstairs. She's waiting for me to shut up so she can go because you know how noisy I am. Okay. Try, I try to be quiet. I can't be quiet. <laughs> That's what she says every morning. I'm like, oh, did you hear me? And she was like, you're so noisy. And I was like, yeah, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's... I think there's, what, 40-something points in it? Yeah. I th- I think if Top Rat's going to be in for a shout, though, it, Bautista's going to have to come off. Oh, ah, yeah, he's going to have to. He needs Batista to, like... He needs to bin it. He needs, he needs him to bin it in the in the feature race. And something. more than more than just one, because even... Yeah. even it, it didn't help Top Rack he didn't win that race. If he had won that race, it would have been a few extra points. It would have been, yeah. But he just... Um, obviously, in the race with... Um, in the last race, Locatelli was obviously in front of Top Rack for a lot of that. And yeah, that was strange. That too. I know there's not team orders and stuff. No, they don't need to. And I know they they mentioned that Locatelli's racing for, you know, he could potentially get third in the championship. But you know, I was screaming at the TV like, get out of his way. Let yeah. Go. Like towards the end of the race, I was like, it doesn't matter now. No, it doesn't. Even yeah, it doesn't matter. It's gone now. Any opportunity's gone. Mm. But like at the start of the race. 47 points, yeah. But at the start of the race, towards the start, I was like, let him pass. Yeah, because he, he, he uh, in a way, he kind of ruined his opportunity. I, I don't know if he would have caught, would he have caught him? I don't know. They were saying that the tyre choice that um, he went with was probably the wrong one. 
Um, that's why he was stuck. Yeah, and, and, and there was something wrong with the power as well that he wasn't able after when he was coming out of the slipstream from Locatelli, he wasn't able to get past Locatelli. The, yeah, the, well, that's we've kind of we've kind of skipped over the sprint race, but yeah, but that's fine. We can talk about it in a minute. Hmm. So we'll see him. Uh, yeah, but they were mentioning that there's what twelve rounds or something, and they've only got six engines. I think. Yeah, so I think he was on the, he was on an engine which was. On its last legs, sort of thing, wasn't it? Yeah, because they want to keep fresh engine. Yeah, I engines. think I think there's two. There's two left. He's got two left, so they're probably going to put a new engine in both rounds. They'll probably put me, but they made a. They also made a point because I did hear them say that. I was, like it was a valid point. They know more than what well, I know. Hmm. We know, but they also made a very good point that if Locatelli would have let. Raz Gattiaglu passed him, like towards the start. Just let him pass him. Let him chase after top or by. Let him chase after Bautista. <laughs> yeah. Out eventually, every time Bautista sees his pet board, he sees top rack behind him, and that's pressure because yes, he knows top rack is coming. And like, if he's, he's if he's going to see Locatelli, he's going to be thinking, meh. Exactly. If he sees <laughs> Locatelli, he thinks, well, well, that's exactly what he's thinking. He goes, oh, I can ease off a little bit. Mm. You know, I can because. He's got to go buy Locatelli before he gets past me, or yeah, just you would that, have thought that, the team that would mind have, uh... and you think because he had already crashed that weekend, you would have because thought he had already the... crashed that. They would have yeah, said move maybe... over. But then again, he doesn't have to because it's no, not of course that he sport. doesn't. They no, don't it's, have not. To. it's not form. It's not car racing. It's not Formula One, and no. I think. I think they, they, even if they tell him, even if they like put a flag out or they, they put like something out and say, do it, he doesn't have to. No, he doesn't have to. Of course he doesn't. No. But I thought they would do that. But then again, now this is being very cynical. I don't I don't know. Do you think, is there a part of Yamaha, part of Yamaha who are like, or what are like, hmm, don't really care if he wants now or not? Like, do they really want the championship winner to win the championship and then leave? Yeah, yes, they do. They want the championship. But <coughs> they're but they're going to win the constructors championship. Mm. There is a, that is a thing. It's not very big to contest it no. in world superbikes, but as a thing, they are the top team because they've got more podiums and they get more finishes. We because Ronaldo kept falling off. But they are the top team, so we're already one and that. So they can already argue we're the best bike on the grid. We just don't need the champion. Do they really want the champion and then just to leave? So a part of me was thinking, do they really want Locatelli to move out of the way? Mm, maybe. You never know. You, you don't know what's but that's, that's going me, on behind that's closed doors. That's me being a bit cynical. It's me being a bit cynical, obviously. Maybe. Yeah, so obviously Batista won. Yes. The race too. He did. I think he came back with a bit of a... Fire in the belly on that one, didn't he? He just thought, you know what? Yeah. I'm at my home round. Well, not home round, but I'm, I'm in Spain. I need to absolutely smash this. And um, he did. He won the sprint race as well, because on the last lap, he went from third to first pretty much. Well, I think he passed top right into second on like mm. the last straight of the penultimate lap. I was so gutted too. I really wanted Ray to win that race. The sprint oh, race. I did he was so well. close to winning the race. He was. I, I think. He, yeah, he was. He was leading it for most of it. He was about two or three corners, maybe four or five corners away from winning the race. Mm. I was just like, Batista, come on, come on, mate. Such a shame. Fuck off. Yeah, but Batista probably shitting himself, isn't he? <laughs> I need to win. I need to beat Top Rack. So there's fifty. 67, 134 points left. 134 points up for grabs. And top right is 47 points behind Batista. Now, realistically, if you're a betting man, you wouldn't see past Batista no. left in the, the, the trophy because 47 points, two rounds. Even if he comes off... We won all the races. Like if he comes off in the first race, top right wins. It's down to twenty two points. Yeah. If Batista then beats him, it's up to twenty seven points again. 
Yeah. And then if Batista beats them, or if Top Rack wins the next one, it's down to 22 points again. Move on to the next round. You know, let's say... Let's say... Uh, Batista comes off again. Well, by that stage, it'll be down to Top Rack leading by three points. But then if Batista comes out and wins the next two races, he's still going to... Like, you know what I mean? Still, it would be, be very, of, very, very good to watch, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes, it would be. All I want is, I don't want Batista to go to the last round in Spain more than the 60, what is it, 62 points. Basically, I want the last round there to be a mathematical possibility that Batista yeah. could win, or Top Rack could win, because mm. he's 47 points ahead, so there is... Yeah, I think it's 62 points a weekend. He's 47 points ahead, so that's quick math, 15 points. Mm. Yeah, if Batista gets 15 points in top right this weekend, he wins the championship. That's Which is good. a little bit... Yeah, you'd like it to go to the last weekend. Yeah. I think that's when but it's going to be... See. When it's going to be... Well, we won't see because we'll be at we'll be at the BSP. Brown touch. We'll be at the last round of the BSP watching that instead of watching the last round of the World Supers. So the other thing, Chippy was saying he's not watching the race and he doesn't want to know the result and don't tell me the result. And I was like, hold on a minute, you're aware you're spending all day with a British Superbike team. Surely and they're going to be looking super- at it. And you have to imagine how many actual bike fans are in amongst that circle of people. Mm. Some of them must have been like having an eye in the world superbikes. I guarantee Steve would have been. 100%. Must have been. <laughs> must have been. Do you, I, do you think it's one of them things where it's like, they're all in the corner, <laughs> like Joey and friends. <laughs> yeah, when he's, got the, when he's yeah. got the the American football game. <laughs> yeah. Who's winning? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Indians. Is yeah. Is <laughs> Is he at a funeral or something? Yeah, the, no, they're or yeah, they're at a funeral. Yeah, <laughs> he's at he's at. A, I watch bikes everywhere. Like we go, we take the kids to soft play. I'm like, yeah, I'll go soft play. I'm watching the bikes. <laughs> so the bikes <laughs> on. I watch everywhere. Watch bikes. Don't care where I go. Get out. I love technology. Get out my phone. Bip bop bop. Get me <laughs> earbuds in. Except I lost one of my earbuds at soft play. Got it. Oh, now I've got no. my fucking headphones. Oh no! <laughs> right, so that's the world super bikes. We went through that in a nutshell. Uh, <laughs> in a nutshell, because it's the same every week, and mm. it's just the same stuff every week. It's the top right Batista ratio. Even though last week Ronaldo did win a race, which was good to see. Uh, right, so after we talk about the racing, we're going to go on to silly season, which we don't have a load to talk about, but we are getting to the end of the season, and there's not a lot of rides that are unseated at the minute, so... Yeah. So Chippy's usually our silly season guy. He is, and he'll usually put a little jingle in, and we don't have it, so it'll have to be... (laughs) Angry Birds. That's... that's, Just just think of Angry Birds. Yeah. And then he'll always go... And then he'll always go... I've, uh, can you hear it? Can you can you hear it? <laughs> can you hear it? <laughs> can you feel it? <laughs> <laughs> Old man shit his pants. <laughs> right. <Can't imagine. laughs> That'll catch you every time. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> right, so from Chappy, he's put on here. Loris Baz to ride for Synthetic BMW and BSB replacing Danny Buckham. This was mentioned the other week too. It was, yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, obviously Loris Baz not going to be in World Superbikes with Bonovo BMW anymore because Scotty Scott Redding. Redding's replacing him. Yeah, going in there. So he has to go somewhere. I don't know if that's confirmed. It's in silly season, so I don't know if it's confirmed. I still think Loris Baz could maybe go to Moto America, but... I guess for home life, personal life, he's French. It makes a lot more sense for him to end up in BSB. Yeah, it's uh, only over the, over the water. Danny Buckham. Yep. 
Danny Buchan, he's, uh, he's a nice lad, actually. He's Sam Hat. Sam Hat. Um, but he hasn't been did doing you, very well. Did you take my advice and go to Boots or something and get them photos printed out? I didn't. Well, you still got a couple of weeks to do it. So basically, folk, Ash has got his picture taken with quite a few bike riders. And we're going to be in the company of said bike riders and Brad's Hatch. And if you get them pictures, print it out, you can get them to sign said pictures. I that know, would be better. But then you've got to carry them around with you, and then if you have to wait, I know. For ages. But at the minute, the minute, and it's I'm not I'm not having a go at it. It's nice. I like what you've done with it. Your little frame. But at the minute, you've just got the same crappy little you know advert pictures that they give to anybody, where you've actually met them and spoke to them proper, rather than just stood in the line for forty five minutes in the pouring rain. Mm. It'll take you. Don't be so lazy. It'll take you five <laughs> minutes to go into boots and get them printed out. It's so easy to do. And you're like, oh, hey, carry my bike with you. You have them in a little bag and you you put them in a little book and you carry a little rucksack around with you. Then you're just like, oh, David Todd, he's got my picture with you a few weeks ago. Can you sign this? He's not going to be like, no, fuck off. He's going to be like, yeah, mate, of course. <laughs> He was he, on, he was he was he was off his tits. He was trying to fucking sign somebody's face with a sharpie. He's like, oh, <laughs> he's like, oh I've already signed your hat. I'm, well, I'm not going to be wearing that when we go. That's not going anywhere. Not staying here. Right. So more silly season. More silly season. Philip Ertel. Philip. <laughs> what was that? What did you say? What? <laughs> I thought you said something. I never heard it. No, no. I just said that's not going anywhere. That's staying it. All right. Uh, Philip Ertl is moving to Moto America uh, as Team Go 11 can't afford to run two bikes and Ian One will be on that team next season. So Now cool. I did hear that apparently at Moto America King of the Bangers, have you, have, have you ever watched Moto America? I haven't, no. Uh, you would love King of the Bangers. It's basically like FTR, 1200 Indians and big yeah. souped up Harley Davidson's just race round. It's class. Yeah, brilliant. It's kind of like the F900 Cup, except... Just naked. a mishmash of bikes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like the F900 Cup... American. Yeah. In a way, America just had to add an extra layer of... We're going <laughs> to use some Indians, <laughs> and we're going to use some Harleys. Yes. But I guess they got to sell Harleys and Indians somehow... So that's what they do. That's true. Uh, yeah, it's decent though. But they only do about five. They only do about five or seven laps a race. It's really good though. I like it. Mm. Them big heavy bikes too. Big twelve hundred, like hauling them round. But they do it with the panniers and all on. <laughs> like, they got the big. They got the big ferns at the front. They got the panniers and the, the you know the back box. And they're riding round about with all that on as well. No, I'll go over on the GTR. But, sure, might go on. <laughs> Brilliant though, I love watching them. But anyway, apparently, I'm digressing, apparently they were putting all over Twitter, I've not seen who it is, but they're saying that there's a big name coming to King of the Bangers, I don't know who it is, I doubt it's Philip Ertel. No. I would imagine Philip Ertel's going to Supersport or actual Superbikes or something. Uh, and the last one he's got down here is Mark Marquez announcement supposedly due this week, they did say it would come after India. Mm. Uh, uh, Paolo Giabatti confirmed... I don't know if it was today or yesterday, I think it was today, that Grassini, well, he did mention it in the Indian GP, that Grassini are basically waiting for Marquez to make a decision, but I think they're in, you know, they're like, he can come here if he wants. Yeah, but I think for him. Marquez is waiting to speak to um, somebody from Honda, isn't it, when he goes over to Japan. Mm. He's waiting to speak to them to That's basically sweet, yeah. say... Am I going to get the support that I need, or am I going to fucking Grassini? I think that'll be the nail in, last nail in the coffin, depending on what happens with his future. Well, Greg Haynes, who is a commentator on Eurosport, I believe, obviously knows a lot of bike people because he's yeah. been commentating the motorbikes for years. He's a motorbike journalist in a way. So, Greg Haynes has it. On oh, good authority from a good contact of him in Ducati, who I don't know who that is, but apparently it's all done, it's all sorted. Mark Marquez is on his way, got his bag packed, got his Italian visa sorted. Mm. Does he need an Italian visa? I doubt it, 
because he's Spanish. He well, I think it'll be a, a if it is a done thing, it's going to be really good for Mark Marquez and Grissini and for Grissini. But like I say, of... still don't think he's going to do anything. But we'll see. Uh, even after this weekend, when he got a podium and a bike that doesn't work, no. He proved the talent he's got, and that's on a bike that's yeah. not even near as fast as Jukai's. Well, I hopefully, agree with hopefully, I think from you, it's it's not. It's no hatred towards Matt Marquez. I mean, we've come on tonight, and I've turned around and said, you know, I'm glad to see he's back on the podium. I'm glad glad to see him do well this weekend. I haven't got anything against him. I'm just obviously more of a Rossi fan when it comes to when it comes down to it yes that's fine but you can't I don't hate the guy he's an amazing rider I think he's a brilliant rider but I just do not think he is he'll do better than what he's doing on the Honda but I can't see him winning another championship well here's a question for you if he goes to Grassini or if the Honda improves but I'm thinking more if he goes to Grassini do you think he will be a race winner I think he'll win some races. Well, if you can win races, you can win a championship. Yeah, but he won't win enough. Is that another? Yes, is that another point. bottle of uh, golden hen? Old golden hen pouring into my glass. Yes. Have you got a nice uh, bottle of Bishop's Finger there as well? A Bishop's Finger. Have you never had that? You know when you go like well, Tesco, I've never, had a, I've never drank one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that's the name of this podcast, Bishop's Finger. What drink? What drink after that one? That's really easy. I've never had a, I've never had a Bishop's Finger. Have you not been to like the ale section in Tesco and you see all the ales there? There's, there's always old speckled hen, Bishop's finger, um, Spitfire. You've got. I've um, seen all that. I, I don't recall seeing a Bishop's finger. You next time you I'm go, have a look, and there's one called Bishop's finger. I'm telling you. Right, I'm looking out for it now. That's my next goal. And right. you uh, have to get a bottle, and you have to get a bottle of Old Peculiar. Yeah, I've had it. Have you ever seen the one that's called Old Humper or something? No like a picture of a pig. <laughs> it's the old hamper or something. I was like, what sort of name is that? Right, as for silly season, the only other one I can come up with just on the spot is Rinaldi. Apparently there's talk that he might be going to Moto 2. Don't know where. Hmm. Yeah. I've seen that as well. I can see that happening. He's a decent enough rider. He is He's a decent enough rider, yeah. I can't understand why. Where's he been all year? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Like, was he just riding around thinking, I don't need to try because Batista's just going to win everything anyway. <laughs> and then he just let it go. He just let it slip out of his fingers between his... I don't know. But Maybe. Seems a little bit strange that he's doing so well now. And, like, I know, he's yeah. Up the round, he's been up there and won a race. And... Mm. Right. So... That's the lead us on to next week. Yeah. And our predictions. Yeah, next week and our predictions. Should we do let's do the uh, Moto GP ones first in Japan. So for the sprint race, I have gone with Marco Bezeki. Because um he's he's doing really well at the moment and I want him to do well. I like him a lot. I've gone for Jorge Martin. Yeah, and good I don't shout. know why Chappie, Chappie's done that. He's probably went, oh, KTMs go well around there, or whatever. <laughs> but Chep Hat, Chappie, Moto Chappie, has gone with Brad Bender. Moto fucking sleepy, because he can't be asked to come to the podcast. Oh, Sorry. I've got to work in the morning. I've got to go to work. Oh, no. <sighs> God. do nothing <laughs> go to sleep yes <laughs> so he's gone for Brad Bander Brad Bander was a bit of a he was the sprint, sprint guy wasn't he he was the sprint master but, but yeah he's kind of fallen off cliff a little bit Martin's now the sprint master he is yes he does very well on the sprints 
But in I know, saying that, is. I think I think Bagnaya has won the most sprints, though. Yes, and if Bears can Bezeka can somehow avoid his teammate, yes, Marini, Marini, stay away from Bears, you utter utter tool. <laughs> uh, so the MotoGP feature race for the actual race, I have gone with Bagnaya. I think Bagnaya will bounce back, Mategi. Yeah, because obviously he had. He had a a slightly well. He came off and had his legs ran over, and then the following weekend, which was like a week, two weeks later, he podiumed but didn't want to race. But that's mm. fair enough. He had his legs run over, yeah. and then this week he crashed. So I think Mategi is when he bounces back, he will want to race. In Mategi, you've gone for Bezeki again. Bezeki again, keeping it safe. One on the one eventually. And <laughs> Chippy's done the same. He's going for Brad Bender to win the actual race. I don't think... I can't see that happening. I can't see... Bender. Now, he's probably looked at it and he's like, oh, KTM's go well right Well, there. he's Very probably looked at it. He's probably looked at last year's results, hasn't he? But... I reckon... I wouldn't say he doesn't have a chance to win either of them, but I would say his hopes are definitely a lot higher for Brad Bender to win the sprint race. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I could see him winning that one over the over the main race anyway. Now for Moto Two, Chip Hat has put down Aaron Carnot. I can't see that yeah. happening myself. Um, he has to win one eventually, but I don't think it'll be in Japan. Um, Are you going for? I've gone with Jake Dixon. I'm hoping he's going to bounce back and do something, and hopefully not get yes. knocked off. You and know, myself, I've gone. Sorry, go ahead. Lopez, stay away. All right, <laughs> ban him. Just ban From him. Everybody, ban him. Ban him. He ruins everybody's <laughs> championship. He ruined my championship. He'll never yeah, live that just, down. Never yeah. live that down. <laughs> no, never. I can imagine in years from now he'd be doing, he'd be a pundit, and somebody will come off, and somebody will look at him and be like, ban him. <laughs> he'd be like, ah. Oh. God, it was He'll be emotional. there throwing his microphone down and walking off. He mentioned it in a he mentioned it in a interview. I seen him in an interview and he's like, obviously I don't want to say too much of a let my emotions run away with <laughs> I was like, Yes, you have. Uh, I've gone with Arbolino because it's a good show, Arbolino that. shows good form on the flyaways and as proven he came second. So it's just whether Acosta can beat him or not. Hmm. Uh, Moto three. I have, oh, sorry, excuse me. It's getting late. Half ten yes. here. Moto three. I have gone with Toba because yeah. Toba got a good result this weekend. Japanese rider at home, coming off the back of a good result. Yeah, I see him a possible race winner. He's gone with Suzuki. The bastard. Which, oh, obviously, God. Well, you call, you say, you say, bastard. Why do you always wait until the last minute before uh, you put your I just then? completely forgot, to be honest with you. I really did. But you, you forget every week. I, I put know, my I know. Down, I know. I was putting my predictions <laughs> down like five minutes before we started recording. And even then, I was like, ah, oh, still hasn't put his predictions in here. Oh, no. I kind of did it as we were doing this podcast, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this is the one time that Suzaki's going to freaking win, and I didn't pick him. Uh, I've gone Who's with Alonso, David Alonso, because we love David Alonso. David Alonso, we hype are, train, get on the train. We are on the David. <laughs> I would love to see David Alonso win the championship. I would. It'd be class. Path. Do you yes. want to go through your World Super Bikes, or will we just run uh, over it? We can. Yeah. No, actually, let's go through it because we have a little bit of difference, right? So, I've gone for Ray in race one. Chip Pat's gone for Bautista in race one, and you've gone for Ash? I've gone for Top Rack. Yes, fairly standard. Yeah. The, the three main protagonists, as I would call them. Change a little bit here, though, because race two, I've gone for Bautista. You've gone for... I've gone for Rinaldi. Because... Chip Pat's gone yeah, for Top don't... Rack. Ronaldo's obviously, as we said, he's coming into his own at the end of the season. God knows why, but yeah. you never know. He might, he might uh, pull one out of the bag. Well, 
he's racing for a ride. He's literally racing for a supper. So he needs yes. to do something. Right, race three. I, too, have gone for Ronaldo in race three. Chip Pat's gone for top rack. And Ash, you have gone for... Batista, which is just pretty standard, really, isn't it? If, uh, if Ash sounds like he's he's distracted, it's because he's trying to put his <laughs> predictions down for BSB as well. I didn't notice that was at the bottom, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much racing on next week. There's three on. And we're at one of them. I'm so excited. No, we're at this Donington. We're not at next week. Oh, week. yeah, shit. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, a couple of weeks we're out. But still, there's MotoGP, World Superbikes. Oh, I just thought of something too. What? I picked the keys up to her house at the weekend, so I've got to drive the whole way down south to my new house and see what sort of... Well, say my new house, my house, and see what sort of state it's in. Oh, and God. And on Sunday I've got to drive back up, and somehow I've got to do that and fit in watching, you know... A dozen motorbike races all on the weekend. Just stick it on your phone on your dashboard, you'd be all right. <laughs> yeah, my wife will be happy with me doing that. Right, so Donington Park, BSB. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, race one, I've gone with big old Tommy B, Tommy Bridewell. <laughs> Let's hope he can Kevin's bounce bounce back from uh, his little discrepancies. <laughs> well, yeah, he's fast enough. Yeah. Um, uh, let, let's see if he can I, not break too hard behind the safety car. he has gone for Kyle Ride. Good shout. And he's doing I've really well. Gone f- I've gone for Glenn. Or <clears throat> race yeah. two, I've also... Or sprint race or whatever. I don't know what's what. But, well, I do can't be bothered thinking uh, so race to Glen Irwin is what I've gone for as well mm-hmm. and you two have changed a little bit Ash you've gone with I've gone with Lee Jackson he did really well last weekend um, he's very fast he on did. that bike he got three he got three podiums last weekend did, yeah. whether he can do that again let's see and Chippy has gone for Jason O'Halloran and then for the last race because I don't think Glen Irwin will get a uh, Triple and plus because Chippy packed it before me, so I went for Tommy Bridewell. Chippy's got for Glenn Irwin, and this time you have gone for Kyle Ride. Um, yeah, he's definitely coming back into his own. It's Kyle Ride a bit more. I was torn between Kyle Ride and uh, uh, Ryan Vickers on that one, but I've no, I've just noticed that Chippy's changed the freaking questions. Yeah, why did he do that? I don't know, but he's not even here, so why would I ask a chappy question if he's not here? Exactly. Uh, I'm pretty sure the question was, what's the main thing that we hate about racing? Yeah, what's the one thing we'd like to change? But we well, didn't put that in last yeah. week because... Uh, yeah, but then we, we said, oh, some... we'll leave it there, and then we'll do it next week, and then Chippy just had no, to change it all. But he decided not to turn up. What a knobhead. Well, I'm not reading out his question, he can get, he can get fucked. No, Chetley, we're not doing your question. <laughs> because I think he's just changed it at the last minute. Yeah. And he's not here. So I'm not doing a Chetley question if Chetley's no. not here to yeah, answer his here. question. You could have been here. Right now you're sleeping. Psh. Um, I've got a question for you, Ash. Go on. Off the cuff. Yeah. No, I think I might know the answer. Yes, I do but... have gentle genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite movie that revolves around motorbikes not all about motorbikes but it's quite heavily motorbike oriented oh, um, kind well, of put you on the spot with that one that was on the spot because there's a lot that I like movie well, uh, na- name some movies there's a lot I can only think of two or three what movies is a lot that involves motorbikes well, I don't know if you can call it a movie, but um, Sons of Anarchy series. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would add that in there. That's yeah, pretty that's, awesome. That's, that's really class. good. No, um, whenever, I worked, whenever I worked in HMV, I had long, my long hair and obviously a big beard, because I always do. 
And the guys come up to me, the little teenage boys come up to me and were like, oh, you look somebody out of Sons of Arnica. And at the time, I'd never seen it. I was like, oh, yeah, I'd never seen it. Mm. And they're like, oh, you look like an Irish Viking. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, cool. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to have my long hair again. But yeah, Sons of Arnica is class. I Sons of Arnica is brilliant. And uh, I like, have you ever seen Biker Boys? Have you ever seen that? It's got Matt, oh, no, Matt, it's got Martin Lawrence in it. It's got Kid Rock in it. And they're all like different sort of biker gangs, but they're all on sports bikes. I take it's a comedy, is it? No, it's really good. It's decent. They do drag racing Martin on Lawrence, bikes. Is he is Martin Lawrence not usually a c- comedian? No, or am I think something. Not else? not Martin Lawrence. Uh why do I always say Martin Lawrence when it's his name? It's the guy that plays freaking Morpheus in uh, Matrix. Is it Lawrence Fishburne? Lawrence. Oh yeah, because that sounds like. Well, it's Lawrence, isn't it? So <laughs> they, don't, they don't resemble each other in any way. Well, they They're do. One's people. Martin Lawrence and one's Lawrence Fishburne. That's why I was getting mixed all up. All right, so there's. All right, right, right. I'll give you that one. Oh, well, fair enough. They both have Lawrence in their name. Fair uh, no, I've never seen Biker Boy. It's actually. Uh, have you ever bad. seen? I've got more coming into my head now. What was the one? Uh, old Hogs. What's that? Wild one? Hogs. That's good. That Wild Hogs. That's, That's got good, Martin man. Lawrence in it. <laughs> and John Travolta yeah, that's, that's brilliant yeah oh that's a good movie I like I might watch that one Closer like to the one. Edge Closer to the Edge that's well it's more like a documentary that's than a movie. more documentary uh, yeah the one I said to you today which is really bad but Silver Dream Machine Silver Dream I haven't seen it it's got David Essex on it I don't know who that is <laughs> He's he's got Christmas songs. Oh, was he? Pretty sure he's got Christmas songs, and he's like, he was an actor, and uh, oh, I forget his name. It's and it's not even going to come to me. I'd have to Google it, and I don't have time to do it now. Oh, if if anybody can remember the the bike rider who who acted or he read the bike in place of David Essex. And Silver Dream Machine, send us an email and let us know. The name's running through my head, but I can't get it to finish. But basically, I think it was at Brands Hatch or Donington Park or something. But in between races, so the likes of Barry Sheen and all right racing, mm-hmm. in between races, they then had to go and film the movie. <laughs> and they had this motorbike rider who wasn't, they were interviewing him a few weeks ago on BSB. I can't remember his name, but he was the guy that read the bike for them. But mm. yeah, Silver Dream Machine, David Essex, it is, it is terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. But I almost feel like you should watch it. Okay. Just to see how, A, to see how bad it is. And at the end, the end of it is just bonkers and peculiar. But <laughs> yeah, I can remember watching that when I was a kid. Watched it a lot when I was a kid. And even now I'm like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you watch the start of it, and I know it's not. It's not nice to talk about in motorbikes or a motorbike podcast. I'll I'll ruin the start for you. Apologies, spoilers. But the the main guy, his friend, gets killed in a motorbike accident. Mm. But the, but the accident is so shit. It's <laughs> like, well. Well, that wouldn't even hurt. <laughs> like, <laughs> God, yeah. So bad. But at the time, like, I think it was like the 80s or something. Mm. But you watch it now and you're like, oh, come on. And they're like, oh my God, he's dead. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. Jeez, yeah. oh, fell out the bath worse than that. But that could kill you too, I suppose. Anyway, Silver Dream Machine, that's a good one. I think you should watch the it. The Fastest the Indian one. is so good. Yeah, that was in your film. That's such Indian. a good movie too. So good. That is such a good movie. Love I that really film. like that movie. Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other movies that kind um, of evolves around motorbikes. Ghost Rider? Yeah, that's true. Ghost Rider, it's in the name. He's a yeah. rider and he's a ghost. Well, he's a massive skeleton, but... Yeah, Ghost a Rider. Motor <laughs> bike. Mad Max, number one. There's a lot of bikes in that. There is. A lot of bikes and that, and uh, yes. another one which was it's, it's not really revolved around bikes. It kind of is and it kind of isn't. But uh, Quadrophenia. Do you ever watch that? Mopeds. Is that yeah. Mopeds. Yeah, but you got the mods and rockers, aren't you? And the rockers are on actual I've... bikes, and the mods are on on Vespers. 
I've never seen it because it's a good I, it's a good film. I find that whole that whole period of like well probably more particularly English history, modern history, I find it rather depressing. Mm. <laughs> mm. I don't know why. I don't know why. They're little mopeds. Why is up? <laughs> <laughs> Stay yeah, anyway. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of ones about no, it. No, I should watch Quadrophenia. Yeah, I should watch it's it. good. Stings in it. <laughs> I've I, like I, like I, like I mentioned. I used to work in HMV, and it was fairly popular. Like so, I am aware of it. I do recall it. I can see the cover art, uh, but I've never watched it. Yeah, what's your favourite one? My favourite what? To be honest, I might go back and start watching Sons of Arnicky again. I enjoy that. I so good. good. They made a, a series after it, which was ever, called The Mayans. It wasn't as good. Yeah, yeah, because they were a group that's in it. I've never finished. I've never seen the conclusion of Sons of Arnicky because it what? just got a bit... <laughs> no, it just gets a bit wishy-washy. Oh, no, you need to watch can. the end. You need to watch the oh, end. Man. You won't... Towards oh, the end of them, oh. about like, I don't care, just start killing again. They stop killing each other so much. I'm like, we're smiling. Well, you smiling really need to watch the freaking end then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, really good. I I need... And I met I one of the uh, one of the cast members as well. Yeah, you did the Scottish Com- Comic Con. Yeah, it... Tommy Flanagan. Does he does does he have the scar on his face or? Is he does. So that uh... was when he was uh, a bouncer back in Glasgow. And he, uh, and he just always, he got glass in the face. Just looks, just looks hard as fuck because he yeah. got scar in his face. Yeah, he got glass in the face, and that's what that was from. I met this guy once who was covered in lots of burns, mm. and uh, I didn't really bring it up, but I was at a party and he was there, and somehow we started talking about it. And he told me this story about how he was. And the wrong company. Now, imagine I'm from Northern Ireland, so you can imagine what the wrong company is when you hear my accents. But anyway, he was involved in the wrong company and certain people come in and burnt him. And I was like, oh my God, what sort of party am I at? Who am I Who am I drinking with here? You know, mm. shit. And I spoke to this other guy and he's like, no, mate, he just fell asleep with a cigarette in his hand and the sofa went on fire. <laughs> and I was like, oh, but yeah, his story was cool. <laughs> 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 like, like, how did you get that scar in your face? Oh, I tripped and fell over when I was drunk. Getting glassed sounds much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Right, so we've come to the conclusion that we're going to watch Sons of Arnicky again. On the way. Yeah, yeah. And you, should, and you should watch Silver Dream Machine because it's so bad. It's good. It's not. I might, I might have to watch the fastest Indian again as well, only because it's just yes, one, I, it's well, it's one of them movies you which you it. just you you never get bored of, and it's really a good nostalgia because I seen it when I was a kid. Well, when it first came out, I was young. I don't know, maybe I already been out, but I watched it when I was younger, so it does give me nostalgia. It's such a good movie. Yeah, it just has character as well. It's just like. He's like such a stubborn old man. He is, but he looked old as dick back then, you know what I mean? And he's like, he must look really <laughs> old now. <laughs> he old. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's... Uh, and let's wrap up the show. Let's run, let's run through our socials and bring the show to an end. Right, so... Uh, do you want to go through the socials or do you want me to do I will go through the socials. So, as we've said many times in the podcast... You can get in contact with us at podcast at bigbadbs.co.uk. It can be about let us know. Let us know what your favourite motorbike movie, TV show is. Yes, please do. Ask us a question. Give us some feedback, whether we're good, whether we're shite. We don't care. Just email us. Any feedback is good feedback. We thrive on it. Anyway, um, YouTube. uh just the Big Bad Bike Show, just search that. Um, you'll find all our podcasts and some uh, videos I've put up, uh, bikes and stuff. Please, I will put a video out of some of my touring around Scotland. I will try and get it done this week, if I remember. <laughs> um, on Twitter, or X as it's now known, we are at the Big Bad BS. Uh, that's become a, a lot more active because Sam's on it all the time. He enjoys it. Instagram, the Big Bad Bike Show. 
Uh, then Which face- is kind of dead, to be honest, but go on it anyway. Yeah, and then uh, Facebook is the Big Bad Bike Show. Now, we have a Facebook page and we have a Facebook group. The group is called the Big Bad BS. That tends to be where we do most of our stuff, really. Yeah. Most of most join, we will accept you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, if you want to contact us directly, you can find Sam on Twitter uh, or X at the Big Bad Biker. I am on Instagram, uh, the Up North Biker, and Chippy is also on Twitter at Moto Chippy. And that's it. And that that's is our it. show. Yep. And it's a two man show. We did it with like Chippy. I think it went all right, Ash. What do you think? I think it was a good show, yeah. Maybe we should just do We have it rattled on for fucking... we have rattled on for two hours and ten minutes. That has been good. And Tell at us. no point at any point did we ever feel like we were struggling. No, absolutely we did not. A lot of do you know what? We did though. we did see, we did, but I think <laughs> you're gonna have an easy edit in this week. Oh, I think I just line them up and send it out. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I didn't do anything stupid well, if, for a change. No, well, I didn't swear too much either. Right, no. so if you did enjoy the show, like I just mentioned, get in contact with us and let us know. And remember that if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcaster, I don't know if you can do it on YouTube or not, give us a review, give us five stars, tell us how good we are, even if we're not, just like. <laughs> You've been the Big Bad Bike Show, Up North Biker. Hey, Rip. <laughs> whatever that means and I'm a big bad biker that's been the big bad bike show goodbye see you later